Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of July 28th. I'm wearing your host, Elijah, sitting with me today, of course, at the revolving chair. I saw Christian is joining me today. How are you, man? Rest in peace to Choco Taco, am I right? You ever try this thing? So, so I actually saw that I showed this to my wife yesterday and she was like what what and i described it and she knew what it was but yeah choco taco what the fuck what they had like that's like the one thing right that people liked like what 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 else they got i don't know i haven't had it in years but i remember like it it being sublime when i was a kid i don't know as how a it kid. was as an adult yeah you get it for as yeah kid, it's it great well, yeah, yeah as an adult you're probably you, you you turn it around you look at the nutritional facts you're like i can't eat this but who cares yeah as a kid as a kid, the ice cream truck, you see the, you, you go over there, Choco Taco, a lot of that, a lot of the Superman ice cream, that was, I was a big fan of that. The Mickey Mouse ice cream no, with the see, bubble gum in it too, the, that was great. The turtles, the turtles with the, the, mm, the gum I eyeballs. I don't think I Fantastic. had that, because I think our turtles was Mickey Mouse. Because I, I, I don't think gotcha. there was a turtles one, I think it was just Mickey Mouse, Superman, and then the other nondescript fucking things. But this isn't an ice cream podcast, no, this is... A gaming podcast. I bring you today Iso Christian, host of a large popcorn podcast, co-host podcast PXN, and a collaborator over at the Penultimate Conquest. Dude, you got a couple accolades here. I'm very impressed. How is all that? How is all that going? Yeah, I am. Yeah. I've dabbled in podcast PXN at, over this last week. I am channeling hard. I think I'm going to fail, but I've been channeling hard to try and get Ellie to win this fucking poll you guys going on out there, and a bunch of frankly silly fools out there are just completely wrong in how they're voting first of first of all thank you for engaging with that poll and i respect you and i commend you for cha- uh, championing ellie as as hard as you did alas it was to no avail because no arthur avail. did in fact oh win God. last uh last <laughs> night so. oh, i'm a deep yeah. character <laughs> No, I love, I love Arthur. I love Arthur. I'm joking, yeah, okay. of course, of course. I'm joking. I love that fucking guy. I, if if I have to lose to someone, I'm losing to Arthur Morgan. It, he was such a compelling character, especially how, especially his beginning to end. I enjoyed a lot. Um, I had a <laughs> I had two weeks ago, I think, uh, Mario not bros on, uh, and he just shitted all over that game, which was really fun. That's like in my mind wow. still. Oh, fuck, he fucking hates it. <laughs> <laughs> he hates it but really? it was yeah yeah he uh i don't put words in his mouth but uh but he basically you know the kind of same uh problems that a lot of people have it's a lot it's too realistic kind of thing you know you cut up the little guy you walk yeah yeah i was like i i, I laughed because it was it was awesome mario hey, i fucking love mario so that was that was Obviously, hilarious I'm, he I'm was glad go- he likes the souls uh souls games now oh yeah we talked n- about nothing about that yeah he he yeah. he's going all steep for that's the other word into the Soulsport game and i'm so excited for him to discover them yes I, I, there's always someone yes. every day that finds them and it's always like <laughs> you're in for a fucking ride enjoy but uh but if yeah I man can, real quick yeah please uh one of the things i was doing right before we started the show okay is i was launching a brand new video essay just dropped on solar punk media in on penultimate conquest all about solar punk media in ghibli movies and Games like Horizon Forbidden West and Ooh, Citizen Sleeper. Shit. Okay, oh, shit. make sure to check that out. Oh. I, I will watch that right after this episode. Then that sounds really cool. So, can you give us like a uh, give us like um I forget what they're called, but uh but the give us like a sizzle, a little thing, uh, something that will get people be yeah. like, oh, I'm definitely watching that now. Elevator pitch co-written with Jackson Wells. We were looking thinking a lot about dystopias and the way it's portrayed in the media and how the lack of kind of any kind of ecological policy is kind of putting a drain on on us and our own arts that we're frequently being hampered on, like no matter if it's TV or, or games, all of it just making us super climate apathetic. Mm. It's why games like Animal Crossing are are so impactful because they're a different kind of video game that allows us to retreat into nature and have different kinds of engagement with nature. And so we kind of went into this new kind of punk media not cyberpunk not steampunk but solar punk which is all about being ecologically positive and we looked at a few things like prince or castle in the sky wow and okay Sixth holy Reaper. shit yeah that, that that sounds really cool so yeah i'll definitely be checking that out make sure you check that out one more time on the channel an ultimate conquest there you go make sure to check that out as soon as you finish this show watch all their shit i will definitely be hitting over there right after this but let's jump into rapid fire 
Meta, formerly known as Facebook, otherwise known as 4chan for your grandmother, announced recently that they'll be increasing the price of their MetaQuest headsets, saying the reason was, quote, increased costs in shipping and manufacturing. The announcement reads as such, in order to convey... Sorry, in order to continue investing in moving the VR industry forward for the long term, we are adjusting the price of MetaQuest headsets to $399 for the 128 gig and the $499, 250 gig, starting 8 1 2022. So, in like three, four days. As an offer, sorry, an offer to download Beat Saber, one of the most popular Quest apps at no additional cost, will come with every new headset purchase for a limited time. It ends September 31st of 2022. So, this year, it will end this year. And uh, this obviously is uh, related to the staggering $2.8 billion loss last quarter in Virtual Labs, which is the uh, subdivision of their VR. Uh, very quick, I will <laughs> I will talk about this very quickly. Um, I don't think I've ever seen, especially a VR headset, just to be like, we're going to increase the price and nothing is different about it. That's a very bold move, I will say, from Meta uh, on this. But uh, I don't know. I was thinking a lot about this yesterday. We had a conversation about this on on PXN. There's a great article by the friend uh, Charlie Wachels on Android Central, kind of breaking down um, just everything to do with Meta about mm. their losses. Um, the thing, the thing for me is that it is insane to think about because there's no improvements. I mean, just buying the Quest right now and then Beat Saber on its own is cheaper than than the eventual price hike yeah. with the bundle included, right? But like. Is that really going to stop Meta? Like, think about the comp- competition. Like, PSVR 2 is, is not going to be the same amount of competition for, for Meta because it's a, it's a standalone device and it's way cheaper. You don't need to buy a PS5 to, to play a Meta Quest, right? Yeah, and then the, no cables. And the closest thing that you can compare to is the other ones that you have a, a whole PC that you need. So that's even, even more yeah. out of the realm of conversation. So I actually drive with you a little bit on that uh, specific observation because... It even with the price hike, it is still the cheapest way to get into VR by a lot. Yes. So like, it is a uh, it is first off shocking that they're just like yeah it's it's just more now. Um, but at the end of the day, it it still kind of makes sense to buy one if you're interested in the platform. I think the real question Meta has to ask is not about how do we make more money, it's how do we get more people to adopt and then yeah. stay on our device and engage with the platform more. In more meaningful ways than just like, and here's a cut of uh, of a sale game that I just bought like for what, my one time in the next three to four months. I don't know. Or how their uh, all their meetings are in the metaverse. Like, th- there's got to be other ways to sell this thing other than be That's like, not real. Yeah, it's barely real, right? Like, it, it's it's still a question mark with my whole meta thing. I, I'm like, I, I I don't even engage in the whole meta side of the industry rarely so i'm just like every time i hear something it's usually something bad a beta for ps5 is launching to participants in the early access program that will bring the highly requested feature of 1440p hdmi output and game list which is a folder system to organize your games very cool according to jonathan Benoyas, i'm pretty sure i nailed that senior environment texture artist at naughty dog expects the Last of Us remake to come to PC very soon. Excited for everyone to complain about the game prices again. Very quickly, um, be excited because that means it, he basically said in a response to someone on Twitter that as soon as it launches on PS5, it will very quickly come to PC. It was his exact verbiage. And if I may, I don't doubt Please. this at all, considering that the game has gone gold already. It's what two to three months in it before the game even launches, so Ooh. they are hard at work on the PC release for this. Yes, like, yeah. I don't doubt. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even be shocked if that's already ready too. It's just a matter of like they want they probably polishing. Yeah, they well they probably want people to still associate these things with PS5 until they're like, and it's on PC. And like a couple of months later, like oh yeah, okay, buy it for PS5 and then buy it for PC. Okay, that's all for rapid I, fire. I feel like I feel like you might see it in September. That's all I gotta say. Really? PC. Whoa! Last was on PC in September. Oh, by the end of it. Now he did say very soon. So I you don't say that without some form of confidence right so i actually don't think you're i don't think i don't, know, I don't think you're too far off here i, I really think september latest november you're Maybe gonna october. see this thing on pc oh yeah, october yeah flesh out i mean let's not forget they projected for this entire fiscal year playstation projected they would make am i gonna fuck this up i'm pretty sure it was 300 million dollars in pc ports like alone so they gotta make it up somehow i guess this is one of those ways 
Now, well, rumor roundup. Before we do that, of course, I start the show every single week with a single question that I ask my co-host, and that to you, Isaac Christian, I ask, what have you been playing? A whole lot of nothing. It's, oh. it's been a lot of, it's been backlog for me that I've been kind of jumping in and out of, and for whatever reason, nothing is hitting, so I haven't mm. really been sustained in, like, chipping out at my backlog. So what I've been doing is just playing comfort games with friends and or by myself, and, and I'll name three, okay? Please. One, Minecraft. Okay. Why am I back into Minecraft? You know, I don't know. It just Minecraft. The word was uttered by my friend Minecraft, and I said, "Let's go." And we turns out you can buy expansions from people for like a dollar. So we're playing Sky Survival, and it's just super chill, just like tending to a farm in the middle of a of a floating island we created. Um, it's been chill. The other thing game I'm playing right now is is back into Rocket League, and it's just like riding a bike. I said this on PXN yesterday. I'll say it again. There is an argument to be made that Rocket League might be game of the generation. Whoa! Generation. It, is, Whoa. It, is, it is that impactful, I think, especially in the esports um, rings and how much it, how quickly it came onto the scene and how much it's been sustained in the scene. I think that's I a think good Rocket thing League to bring up, such, definitely, yeah. Yeah, Rocket League is a fantastic game. Please 1v1 me. I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll lose, I don't know, maybe I'll win. Probably and of course, will. Power Wash Simulator, podcasts, nothing better than that. <laughs> okay yeah so i i've seen a lot of people actually talk about this game i actually kind of want to play it my father is actually uh super into lawn mowing simulator wouldn't be shocked if next time i see him he's telling me about this power wash simulator i kind of want to try it out because i think i uh, talked to someone last week about this so apologies for repeating myself but i do follow on reddit r slash power washing porn so satisfying when you oh, see someone wow. just clean off that sidewalk. So, I mean, it, you make that a game, I'm probably going to get into it. Dude, last time I played, I lost three hours like this. Oh, that's quick. Dude, incredible. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, the, the videos I do see, I'm like, uh, yeah, I could, I could definitely get into that. Um, I've, I've kind of in your boat as well, though, with not really playing that much. I've been kind of taking a break from games just in general, just kind of hanging around, watching movies, watching TVs, catching up on things. I'm actually in desperate need of something to watch so i'm kind of doing the thing where you're looking around like oh, is there something i missed last year or something but i will um i am just started uh from a recommendation of Evan Watkins jr from his episode about three weeks ago uh slay the spire a fantastic game it's a card based roguelite and in, i'm having a blast i started it last night and i i it's just similar to your situation with power wash i, I it was it was 1 a.m out of nowhere and i was like whoa I gotta yeah. turn this off. It was so... I'm having so much fun. I can't believe I haven't played this before. I, I'm super into Hearthstone. When I, you know, I kind of drift in and out of that. Like, every couple times I'll get into it for a few weeks. But this is so much fun. I can't believe it took me this long. And I, there's, like, different characters you can use. They all have different cards. Then there's the relic system. Um, no, you know, not don't mean to brag, but I beat the game on the second character, second try. You know, you know I, feel, oh, I wow. felt pretty good. I felt pretty good. I was like, oh, I already beat the game. Nice. But I will continue to try and finish the runs because it looks like there's more to the story. So I definitely want to figure out what's going on. But man, am I having a good time. I will be playing that probably for the next few weeks until um, probably until Saints Row, which uh, comes to us in a little less than a month. Another Emmett Walker Jr. Oh, game. Jesus. It's, it's, his, it's his really year, I feel like. He's just getting yeah. after my, At the end of the year, they Bayonetta? announced Titanfall 3. Payonetta? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Payonetta, oh, my God. If <laughs> if they announce Titanfall 3 it's over dude they won't uh, but that can. would be amazing I don't know if you saw the rumors of um, yes this thing oh yeah so I'm th I'm over here like first off the way they announced that was hilarious so like it's a it's a first person shooter based off of Apex Legend and it's a single player game and I was like wow we're doing Titanfall like that uh huh we're doing Titanfall like that where we're just pretending like it didn't even exist now <laughs> yikes room around up for you this week we got a big one grand theft auto 6 is in the news there was a master report on bloomberg by jason schrader detailing a lot about grand theft auto 6 and the new culture at rockstar let's start with details on the game it will feature a female protagonist for the first time in a 3d grand theft auto she will be latina and she will be a part of a pair of bank robbers inspired by bonnie and clyde it's codenamed Project Americas, the name derives from originally going to be set in territories in North and South America, but that was scrapped to help negate crunch. Now it's set in a fictional version of Miami, presumably Vice City. 
Now, this report also focuses on the cleaning of Rockstar's culture. Among other things, it's reported that there's a better office culture, a focus on reducing crunch, remover of abusive managers, more full-time employees, and a restructuring of working conditions. It's also stated that the mode called Cops and Crooks was shelved following the killing of George Floyd in 2020. Also, less, quote, punching down jokes, end quote. Yeah. They, they really came out and just gave this and gave them just glowing reviews this last week. Jason Schrar coming out there, basically a PR guy for the fucking studio. Very excited for everything he fucking said. Everything I just read, I'm like, all right, I want to see the game. I can't wait. Now, I want to say that they originally projected. I forgot to write this down, but I'm going off memory. I want to say they originally projected the game to launch of uh, er, uh, mid next year to uh, early 2024. But the uh, developers in the studio were very doubtful that would happen, just so everyone knows. So I wouldn't be shocked if we don't see this till late 2024 to 2025 at the least. What did you make of this, Isa, when you saw all this? Yes. Uh, top of my thoughts, if I may. Please. The First of all, is it a little sad that we have to... <laughs> That we have to highlight that mm. a studio is 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 doing these kinds of things yeah. that we should be doing already. Yes. Right. However, I also think it is extremely important that one, not only are we getting this kind of um, expo on a big, huge studio, uh, actively engaging with avoiding crunch, just like other stu- big studios have done, like recent, like Naughty Dog, right? T yep. Part One, no crunch. Uh, but Rockstar, this level, this quality of game, no crunch, actively getting people out that are contributing towards a toxic work culture, actively trying to make their writing avoid any kind of punching down jokes, avoid anything that might be distasteful, and only focus on the things that make Rockstar great, which is their so- satire and social commentary. All this stuff is so good, considering how, like, how sh- I don't know. Can I cuss? I don't know. No, please, please, how please. Terrible. Fuck shit. How, how, how terrible. Okay. Yeah. How shitty the industry is for so, for so long, right? Getting like report after report on Activision, like already doing the bare minimum here, just getting people rid of uh, out of their studio that, that are shitty people is mm-hmm. already doing like, a way better job than anything Activision has been doing. So top of my thoughts is like, yes, we can applaud this because we're getting examples at like the biggest levels, not just arguably the, the biggest. Right. I yes. think I think Ar- this yeah. is arguably the biggest studio probably we have right now. So I agree yes. with everything you just said. Yeah, we are getting an example of pretty stellar work from not only seemingly the management, but also just everyone overall. Someone definitely went in and cleaned house. So that shows mm-hmm. that someone took all the criticisms to something personally and they made sure to fix all the issues so let's hope that that pans out well i do think um uh what was i gonna come with that yeah yeah i do think um i do how do i want to put this i want to see what the game is like since we are now one short of who founded the studio blanking on the gentleman's sure. name um but uh we recently had one of the head writers that wrote basically every grand theft auto leave the studio and we will see how this uh, goes down when it comes out. I think it's going to be good. Now, still, we're still asking the questions because as far as I can understand, the article didn't answer if it is just a single player game yet. It didn't really answer that. So maybe it's both. Maybe it's all. I remember there's been leaks and leaks of it's it is a single player. It isn't. There's there's this there's a division like scenario that we're going to get. Who knows what it's actually going to pan out to be, but. I do find it interesting that they were originally going to seemingly make it, hey, this is Project America's, you're going to be in multiple territories, but they actually cut it yeah. because they probably were just like, the scope of this is just unrealistic. So they just went with the tried and true of just Vice City. They did detail also in the um, Bloomberg article that the game will be receiving missions and new locations. I don't know. I'm curious what that means. I'm assuming we're getting what we're getting with Grand Theft Auto Online now right now which is like every i want to say what quarter probably maybe every other quarter they get some new thing to do like they added like biker gangs to it they added like the military like thing that you can do like there's so much in the game so i imagine that's what they were talking about too but i'm very interested to see if there will still be i will turn it on and i'm playing a single player game or this is a division open world you're running around you'll see other people type of experience I actually have something I want to I want to please respond to. Okay, I have to start somewhere else though. 
Oh. So two points. Two points. One, it's interesting you went more small scale like service stuff because that that's definitely going to happen, right? right? Because GTA Online prints money. Yeah. Whatever that version is going to be for GTA Six, uh, it's going to be that as well. Um, and so they have to deliver small scale stuff like this, these these constant drops of content to keep people engaged in in mm-hmm. their world. But I was thinking immediately, I went to GTA Four um, DLC, which is uh, Ballad oh, of Gay Tony. Ballad of Gay Tony, and, and, Lost in the Damned, and, yeah. Lost in the Dam, like those kind of levels of, it, oh, but on a bigger scale, right? With new cities and new missions being introduced in this one. Uh, the second point is that there's oh. another rumor. I don't know if you've heard this. Oh, please. You want to hear this rumor? Please, please, please. Lay it on me. According to the leaker, I don't, I don't know the person's name, um, that leaked before RDR2 came out, leaked the map months or years before it actually came out. I Turns remember out the this map story. was actually true. Leaked information on GTA 6 about the playable characters, and it went beyond the Latina character. You ready oh, for this? Oh, yeah, please. It's a, it's a set. Uh, it, it's not a set. It's twins. The, the, the Latina is a kind of gang member drug pusher, and the brother is, a, um, is in the DEA. Whoa, and immediately, okay. And immediately I started thinking about the way, like, huge mission structures happen in grand theft auto of course the heist in gta 4 yeah and then all the heists you do in gta 5 and i started thinking about how much fun rockstar might have with mission structure there um think about like a a culminating mission and some somewhere in the game um where you start off as like the dea agent who is like trying to take down this like huge drug bust and halfway through the mission, you get the other perspective that actually the person that is doing the this drug trade is the DEA agent the sister. Sister. Wow. And so, yeah. And so the mission changes. And uh, I think the possibilities there, if this is true, is going to be super awesome. Yeah, I'm and very plenty excited. Of stuff to... Sorry. No, no, please, 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 please. Keep going. Plenty of stuff to satirize, uh, of course, with, uh, like, police. <laughs> yeah. Now. Uh, with the war on drugs. Status. Yeah, we can yes. fucking go and on with that, right? Um, but, yeah, it, they also did... Uh, beat around that there this isn't an only character situation there is going to be another character at least to play as that is if that is true oh wow that sounds incredibly fascinating and as soon as you started detailing that i could already picture in my head yeah you're in this warehouse you're trying to get out like some product and you hear cops coming you got to work your way around your brother is the one that's coming oh wow yeah 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 yeah. i'm very excited for grand theft auto 6 but it's one of those things where i'm like I don't know. It doesn't even feel real yet. Although I know it's coming. I, I just, I'm still not like excited as if like, what's an example? Like, like I'm excited for Gotham Knights or something like, I, I know that's going to come. Whereas Grand Theft Auto 6, I'm just like, all right, you know, I'm still waiting on this yeah, to come. Sure. Drama. Seems all is not well as Aspire Media. The studio currently remaking Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. According to Bloomberg, the Texas-based studio has fallen on hard times and are having issues during development to the point where they're having to contract help from an in- from the internal studio. I made a mistake here. The internal studio of Embracer Group, Saber Interactive. Let's not forget that um, they were purchased by Embracer Group, put inside of Saber Interactive. So they're technically... One studio, but not really. It's a little unclear. Most likely, they're all working together on this in some aspect. Not uncommon since they were literally uh, placed inside back in February of 2021. This comes after Aspire fired the remake's art director Brad Prince and design director Jason Miner. According to Jason Schreier, the remake has been in development for the last three years, and the project release date was originally this holiday, now being pushed as far back as 2025, and it remains unclear if this means the project may be taken away or dropped completely by the studio. We Shall See, Aspire, founded in 1996, is a famous porting studio with a huge list of games that are mostly filled with Star Wars ports. The last original game was called Torn, a VR game for Vive, PSVR, and MetaQuest. Knights of the Old Republic, or Cold Tour for short, was released on Xbox on July 15, 2003 in North America and September 12, 2003 in Europe. What did you make of all this? And when I first saw this, I went, of course, first off, and second... I found it interesting that Aspire is having issues with a full remake, and I did some research on what were past projects they worked on, and mm-hmm. I'm curious if they're a little over their head on this. I looked over, and it was really, honestly, just porting. It wasn't really any kind of crazy remakes or anything like that, and it is an extensive list of achievers if you want to go out there. It's so long, I can't even list them all, but 
basically almost every single Star Wars game in the last 10 years, they probably have dabbled in porting it or something. But yeah, as soon as I saw this, I went, first off, they might be in over their head. And second, it looks like they might even lose the contract. It detailed that they might even be dropping it to yep. do whatever. Maybe they'll move it to a different studio inside of Embracer Group. Who knows? Who knows what the contract even says? But what did you make of all this? So I'm in a similar boat. When this news dropped, uh, I was reading, reading a lot of comments and like just replies and, and tweets and stuff. And a lot of people were saying like, oh, yo, yeah, what, do, what did you expect with Aspire? And I was like, was Aspire making this? And I, I, for whatever reason, it's, it never like hit me that it, like I just didn't recognize the name Aspire. And much like you, I also looked up like what do they do in the past? And it turns out it's a lot of ports that like were very mixed received. And it seemed like a full remake of a beloved franchise like KOTOR. Um, probably a little bit like out of their depths and so yeah not surprising that they're kind of dropping the ball considering it's their first huge project like this yeah i don't think uh, anything even very... comes close really yeah but also like i don't know very strange for them to just have like no vote of confidence in their in kind of like their heads of departments and just fought like fire two studio heads um yeah not what? studio head i'm sorry the... No, you're, the studio head? Uh, so it's it's the art director Brad Prince and design director. Those are pre- those are fucking Thank huge. You. Those are huge. Yes. Yeah, that's not a small deal. That means someone saw something and went no and and fired them. And even um I want to say Jason Miner, I apologize if it was Brad Prince, but I want to say Jason Miner even tweeted that it was unexpected. So so that means someone saw something and was like we got to change this drastically. And I am I would I would a so much money to see what is going on over there right now because if they have been making this for the last three years and they're oh. not even sure they can fix it now is there must be something atomic going on over there and again let's not forget might be pushed back as far as 2025 so that means they need another two years to do whatever whatever happened i have a question please hot question for you Ooh. what is more concerning for you Quantic Dream Star Wars game that can't even hire people, or this Kotor remake that might not even happen anymore. Ooh, I mean, at least they have people working for them, right? <laughs> so yeah, I, I did find it very concerning when Quantic Dream did mention, uh, oh, what, what was it last month? I want to say, or at le- or it might have been internal leak it, leaking. I don't, I don't remember, but they were mentioning like they were just ha- they're having trouble just hiring people. Period. Like, and I know there's a kind of a talent drought just happening in the games industry right now you can see that in whole studios buying teams just to recruit their people not even to really buy the studio we've seen a couple purchases like that we see people getting i and and this is only through the great brian of people a little more educated than i but hearing people getting very 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 comfy deals to stay where they are very comfy deals to keep working with who they're working with so it sounds like the talent drought is affecting Quantic Dreams in a huge way that might spell doom for the studio. Let's see if they even can get something working on. I think uh, if I remember correctly, uh, when that happened, they were still in pre-pro, meaning like they might be they might be like four years off from this game still. So like yep. they're nowhere close if they can't even hire people like, well, you can't even start making the game yet. So. Yeah, I that's a good that's a good uh, bring up, especially in terms of this. I frankly completely forgot about Quantic Dream um, trying to make that Star Wars game. And that's yeah. So it seems like uh, something is going on with these Star Wars games, especially having so much issues. Poor Star Wars. Poor Star Wars, indeed. This is a quick one because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. NVIDIA is projected to release three high-end graphics card later this year, GeoForce RTX 470, 480, and 490. And there's going to be a TI version of the 490, also known as the Beast. That's that's literally what it wrote. I did say these cards are going to be massive in terms of what they're capable of. Check out TomsHardware.com for the full specs. There was a, a bunch of things. I was I was I almost, uh, Christian, I almost added on. I was like, oh, I'll read these off. And I started reading them. I was like, no, nope. I, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, so... So go check them out if you want. I just wanted to highlight that really quickly. Do you, are you a computer guy? I have no no idea what any of this is. Elijah, I can't wait, one, just not not only to not afford this, but two, <laughs> not be able to buy one at all or yeah. find them online. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is a good point, too, where, like, good luck for everyone who wants to buy one, I guess.
Mm. Uh, somehow the remake of Tactics Ogre, Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together, has leaked again and still has not officially been acknowledged or announced. According to a leaked story, entry, the remake will feature a wide range of changes, improved visuals, game design, quality of life, like auto saves and fully voiced cutscenes. The game is coming November 11. Tactic Ogre was released originally in 1995 on the Super Famicom in Japan. Are you a Tactics Ogre fan? Dude, I can't speak to this at all. I had no I have no idea what Tactics Ogre is. It's a until you it, just said it right now. It's a tactic game. So it's like a it was um I can't remember is this is, should be the Final Fantasy Tactics game. Um that they made I mean, yeah, in 1995 and they're really cool. It's you have to be super into the um strategy games. Did you ever play Final Fantasy Tactics? I'm not no. a strategy game person. Okay, then it's sadly. fine. But but this is a lot like that, and people love these games. So I wanted to highlight it real quick because this will be my first time even playing them. My father, I uh, loved them back when they were obviously on the, his. Um, I, I want to say he he hadn't played them. I think till like 2000 or something. Because I remember watching him. But I cannot wait for this to try it out. But uh, this is like the third or fourth time this thing has leaked, and it still hasn't even been acknowledged that it exists from Square. So that is a little hilarious. Uh, especially since there is now a store page inside of PlayStation that has leaked, and it's coming November 11th. We'll have to see. Oh, so it seems like it's it's very official. That this it's very official. Happen. It's just it's surprising that this has leaked so many times because this was actually a NVIDIA leak. That was the first time we saw it, and then it leaked a few other times. I want to say like through a few leakers on Reddit, and then it yet again has leaked again on a PlayStation store page that just went live way too early. So we'll have to see whenever <laughs> they announce this kind of a little bit off topic but i have to ask because no, you're the second person that, that has said this now it is it pronounced nvidia have i been saying nvidia wrong uh, what do you like, what do you say i years? don't i don't i, I say nvidia so i think you're the se- like, i think nvidia is technically correct i think i think that is the technical pronunciation like the way you are saying it i think it is i just i just say shit dude <laughs> but i'm on pretty PXM, sure. we, well, on PXM, we have like a, a, a you know, PC guy who's like super into this and is like super into NVIDIA leaks. And he says NVIDIA. Yeah, that's what I say. I, I don't I have never heard someone phonetically be like, this is how you pronounce it. So I, I've seen it since. I don't know. I became cognizant of PCs in like 2013 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, NVIDIA. But I do hear people I'll say NVIDIA like, like you know, so I'm like. I don't really know and it's also like it's not like gif and gif situation where it's like it's not like too different where i feel like people even notice but with gif and gif yeah. people are like ready to fucking die we're gonna notice that yeah. yeah yeah they'll call you out if, yes they will trust me they will <laughs> according to the man himself neil Druckmann, there are no plans for a last of us crossover in fortnite which was widely spread around this week this was officially from him on his twitter uh he said sadly this is not not happening uh it went it, it spread like fire it, it, i remember it leaked i want to say like like tuesday and like by thursday he was like no this isn't this isn't happening i think of last week or something like that but yeah this was um this was a hilarious thing that i was like oh i i it's fortnite's gotten to the to the to the degree where i'm just like i just i, I just went oh yeah it's probably real and then it just came eventually really? yeah I, yeah i just dude it's just so much shit in fortnite when i see something's being added i'm like all right. And I just move on because I just don't think about it. But then when I saw well, him be like, no, that's not right. And then upon further exemption, you're like, mm, maybe not. I don't know. They have some wild stuff in Fortnite. I mean, they have Terminator and stuff. Those are rated R movies. So I, I didn't know. Yeah, but like that's like that's got like cultural cash like Terminator. Like there are certain. Well, I guess the last of us maybe does. He's to got, an extent he's got Kratos. The gaming industry. Right? Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Like there are certain IP that I see in like, I mean, that's certainly fake and last of us f- f- smelled like a little bit of like i don't think this is real like if it's official like cool i guess but like it doesn't it doesn't really make sense right. like obviously another another big one that i saw was like morbius but that was like <laughs> that was obviously a meme but it looked real <laughs> enough like, it was a great mock-up but i, I know, know exactly what you're talking about dude <laughs> yeah i did see that where i was like did i say morbius <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> i, I know exactly what you're talking about i saw that and i was like that's fake, right? Because I think he even said it's Morbin time as an emote or something. And I was like, yes. okay, that's yeah. that's a meme for sure. That's a meme for sure. That's a meme for sure. All right, moving on. 
Now here's something to get excited for. According to Jeff Grubb, a man I can't go a single show without bringing up, leaked the existence of a Black Panther game. It's being worked on by EA and will be a single player game developed by a new studio in Seattle. Founded by former Monolith Productions VP and the CEO head Kevin Steffens, I was actually reading that uh, it's multiple people from the former uh, Monolith Productions team, not just him. So we'll have to see how many people it is, but he was kind of the head person uh, mentioned. It's codenamed Project Rainier. The game is about the original Black Panther dying and your character taking over the mantle. Unclear if this is T'Challa or an original character. This marks a continued interest in Marvel games ensuring their RPM are being used. Let's look at all the Marvel games coming. Spider-Man 2 by Insomniac, of course. Wolverine by Insomniac, of course. Midnight Suns by Fire Axes and Skydance New Media, of course, he uh, headed. Uh, that's being directed by Amy Heading. That's her. That's the studio she's working at. Uh, there was a. This was. This started like. Um, this started like a giant wave that I did not expect. I am a huge, just Marvel fan, comics fan from like when I was a kid, and uh, I love that Black Panther, a guy who never even was like rarely mentioned like back in the day as like a popular character now has started a huge wave when someone said there's going to be a game about him. People are like, holy shit, I'm excited. Uh, are you a Marvel's guy? I know a lot of people kind of are, yeah. are, are probably tired of Marvel by now because there's 70 well, different things about it. That's a different like horse altogether. Like We have an MCU podcast on Ultimate Conquest that I'm, that I'm a co-host on. Right. We, like, we're re-ranking the MCU movies and the ongoing ones. We talk about the shows. And you're right. Like There is certainly cultural fatigue happening now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's got to do a lot with like the the consistent drops on Disney Plus and like it not being the same quality as when they were doing just movies. Right. Of course, a lot of issues with v VFX teams. However, like of course, of course, of course, uh, getting a beloved character like Black Panther, whether whether or not it's actually T'Challa in the game or not, um, is going to be huge because people love that character. I think a huge part because of of uh, Chadwick's performance in in Black Panther and you know how how great. Ryan Coogler is as a director. For I have to say real quick, Please. there was a lot of worry about Black where Black Panther Two uh, MCU was like going, like how it was going to come out. Like people were worried about the movie. Like, is it going to actually come out? Is it going to be good? That trailer came out. It's one of the best. Oh MCU my god! I've, I've it's, it, it might be so my favorite MC trailer ever made mm -hmm. by <laughs> by a lot probably. Um, I respect it. Everyone needs take a second today. By the way, if you're on YouTube, you are not having a stroke. I have to fix something in OBS, so do not do not panic. But aside from that, go take a second, and you just watch the Black Panther trailer. Go to go home, quit work, go home. YouTube, find the trailer, you watch it. It's worth it just for the music that's happening. Let alone what yes. you're seeing. Let alone what you're seeing. So like, Chills, dude. dude, when it ends, I think it. I can't. I can't. Yeah. I'll get too excited. Um, but all, all this to say, all this to say, um, of course, there's excitement for a game because there's a chance it's going to be freaking great. And like, Monolith is interesting because I'm not a huge Shadow of Mortar guy. Like those games just never interested me. Okay. Interested me. But arguably, they made one of the coolest mechanics in gaming that they never brought back that no other studios adopted, which is the Nemesis system, which people praise to death, justifi justifiably so, because it seems fantastic and, and i remember um not to cut you off but to quickly surmise when everyone it was happening and everyone was like oh my god this is awesome i can't wait this will revolutionize games and they haven't done anything with it in like 10 years <laughs> yeah so i'm curious to see what, what they bring to to like wakanda like it, it's probably going to be really good is my hope better than avengers for sure yeah that's not saying much though right <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you're, you're, right. <laughs> you're like it's probably better right no i i think um i love the shadow of war games i love the shadow mortar games so you already caught me when when they were like yeah uh the uh former uh, production vp and a bunch of the people from the studios are gonna be there and the studio head and i was like okay all right i'm i'm definitely interested i'm curious what the story is gonna be now because it was yes. unclear, and I think intentionally by Jeff Grubb, because I think he likes to mess with people a little bit, not to spoil everything, but to spoil some stuff. He did not say T'Challa, which I feel like would have been an easy thing to say. If you're leaking the game, can you not? You don't know who the main character is, so I'm. I almost am assuming like, are you gonna create a character or something? That's gonna be strange. Are you gonna be faceless? Not. I hope not either. I don't want that at all. 
Are you going to be faceless, maybe, and you're just wearing a Black Panther thing? Another thing I don't want, but hopefully it's T'Challa or maybe a descendant or something, because maybe they don't want to uh, use T'Challa since the recent death of um, Chadwick. Thank you so much. I was like, God damn it. I'm not a big movie guy, so I always forget people's names. But uh, maybe I, that's... Please. Last thing I'll say, um, and there's a tweet. I'm, oh, I wish I could remember who... I, I want to cite this, but I, I can't. I can't remember who tweeted it. The most important Barack thing, Obama. It was Barack. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Barack Obama. Well, it was. The <laughs> most important thing this team can do is do what Ryan Coogler did, which was bring black talent to create this game. Oh, or, sorry. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. I, saw, I actually saw this too. Um, mm -hmm. Fuck, I'm, bl I'm blanking on it too. But I saw that and went, yeah. Yes. Hell yeah. That, that guy, I, think I want the game will ever die. I want a. I want the like ecosystem from that movie because it is and you're the movie guy. But as far as I remember, almost every single person in that league was black and had like a connection yep. to the culture. So like you just do that here. You're going to nail it. Yes. Get a black writing team to write this game. Yes. You Director, please. Director. My God. Everything. Jeff Grubb is out here again to give us some bad news about Roller Champions. Ubisoft's latest venture into the free to play space. It will be canceled after season three. This is quite an early death. Um, this, uh, if this comes to light, Roller Champions only launched back in May of this year. Uh, Ubisoft continually putting things out and continually canceling them. This gives me um, reminders of uh, what was it called? The Battle Royale that they ran around. It was almost like Brink. Hyperscape? Yes, thank you. Hyperscape. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of that where it's like, yeah, you launched it, nothing happened, and you're like, we're killing it as soon as we can. <laughs> as soon as as soon as it's it's a uh, it's um able to be killed. I'm curious what the player count was. I imagine it was not a lot, and it did not, not make a, a lot. lot of steam when it came out either. So this was probably destined to die out there. I'm waiting for the announcement that they are going to cancel uh, X Defiant. Which oh was the God. Call of Duty clone Dude. that had like a yeah closed alpha or whatever. I every time X Defiant up, I I roast it for like ten minutes straight. I won't do it this week because I did it with Emmett because he had the <laughs> balls to defend that fucking travesty that it looks like it's coming our way. But um, yeah. So X Defiant, like yeah, I, I I feel the exact same way. Like this thing's gonna come out, they're gonna be like, oh, it didn't perform. Oop, and take the cord out and be like, oh, go on to something else. Ubisoft is very much, I want to say, like falling on its laurels quite a bit in recent years. They are struggling to do really anything. Um, yeah. The only thing I've really liked out of them in the last several years were the Assassin's Creed game they've made. And I and that's that's really it. I enjoyed a little bit of the Far Cry, but nowhere near as much as Assassin's and nowhere near as much as I used to. So it just feels like they are. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to be purchased by someone or something. It seems like no one is over there is really trying, caring. They're doing a bad job at it. I'm sorry. No, they're doing they're doing a very bad job at it. But my uh, my point of it is um that maybe the leadership there is just so because we did get those rumors that Yves is trying to get out. Um, I want to mm. say m m two months ago, three months ago, or something like that. Where he does want to get out of there because he doesn't really have anyone to give it to. And he's trying to sell it and make a lot of money now before it gets worse, probably. Because he's probably looking like, I don't know what I'm doing up here anymore. So, And um, Yves was always an interesting figure. Because it seems like when everything was going bad at Ubisoft, Yves was never the one being uh, mentioned. It was always the people around him. So I was always like, why is Yves not in this conversation? This dude might be terrible, too. I don't know. We'll have to yeah. see. And that's yeah, everything we'll for Rumor Roundup. Let's start the actual show this week. We have a fantastic write-up by James Bachelor over on Games Industry Shop Biz discussing with Idols Montreal founder Stefan Diastios about how the environment at the Idols family of studios was and what may have led Square to sell the studios for a dumbfounded low price of $300 million to the Embracer Group. I'll say that again. $300 million. This article is a fascinating read about the culture of the studios and the relationship with their home office of Square Enix Japan. Remember, whenever we read an article on here, I read excerpts, but I never read nearly enough of the article. So I make you go over there and you give them a click. So make sure you go over to Games Industry Job Biz, 
fine. I think it's tied with Square Enix Western Studios was a train wreck in slow motion. You go give that a click, read it through. It's fascinating. I read the whole thing this morning, preparing a show. It is a great read, especially looking at the culture uh, from Japan in how they saw the Western Studios. When speaking about why he wasn't surprised about the sale, he said, quote, it was a trajectory that could be predicted, he tells Games of Jump is. I left because things were missing at head office. Uh, Pre-Square uh, Enix Eidos was, has a great tradition of development teams, but they don't have superior knowledge of how to sell their games, and that was quite clear. You could look at all their great games that Eidos did, and apart from Tomb Raider back then, that was a whole different era. The Hitmans and all those could have been six, seven, eight million unit projects. Deus Ex could have been that also. We hit good numbers, but don't get me wrong. But I always felt that the way to sell games that Eidos used were so traditional and conventional that it wasn't innovative and it was always underselling the quality of the games. I hoped when Square Enix purchased Eidos in 2009, that would change things. End quote. That's like a uh, that's like the stinger at the end of a um, uh, very tense trailer where it's like, I thought when I was purchased, it would change things. But Let's go. Let's go over another interesting expert read. Square Enix has become notorious for declaring multi-million selling games to be disappointments, and Disas Diestos reports that this extended behind the scenes as well. He recalls a meeting regarding the company's financial performance for 2012, where the Idols Group of Studios was expected to generate 65 million profit, and said he was told the developers had lost 65 million that year. "Quote: We were dumbfounded." Especially because my studios didn't have any deliverables for that year. Uh, I was losing hope that Square Enix Japan would bring uh, great things to Eidos. I was losing confidence in my headquarters in London. In their uh, annual physical reports, Japan always added one or two phrases saying, we were disappointed with certain games, they didn't reach expectations, and they did that strictly for certain games that were done outside of Japan. End quote. When asked about the contributing factors of the 300 million price tag buyout, and when compared to Gearbox's at $1.3 billion buyout by the exact same entity, the Astros detained, uh, detailed the following, quote, They have about 1,000 staff, speaking, of course, about Gearbox. Eidos has about 1,000. They have basically Borderlands and others, and Eidos has five times the IP. So why four times less? I guess there weren't a lot of key people interested, and it shows the health of the value of the potential of Eidos, unfortunately. It was a train wreck in slow motion to my eyes anyway. It was predictable that the train was not going in a good direction, and maybe that justified $300 million. But that's not really a lot. That doesn't make sense. Uh, end quote. The Astros is unsure how much of the Eidos Studios' underperformance can be attributed to Square Enix's management in Japan, but he does maintain that some, quote, some of the bad decisions came from London, end quote. The Astros then later goes on about the positive nature that Crystal and Eidos may have now, that they have a new home in a bracer group, but cautions the autonomy that this may give to the studios. Quote, I mean, yes, leave autonomy to the studios to a certain point, but you leave autonomy when there's a strong vision. I knew what they wanted to do. I think they weren't able to do when they were within the group of Eidos because of head office. So that changed their lives for them. But I would leave certain groups autonomous when they have demonstrated that they have a clear vision, know-how, and leadership. And again, I've mentioned all the heads of studios that left the three studios of Eidos. There's a reason why I wasn't the only one who left, end quote. This man coming out and straight up just ragdolling in Square Enix, especially staring at the Japan studios and really just going to town on these guys. Um, Iso Christian, I don't know if you were able to catch this when it went live, but this was a fascinating read that I found. With him just detailing every single thing that he felt wrong with the studios, every little thing that he disagreed with. Um, and I am still, I still don't understand how Square goes to Embrace Your Group and says, you can have all these studios for $300 billion. Now, the article does go into mo billion. <laughs> yeah, $300 million. The, the, Article does go on to say, most likely this is something to do with Square trying to be purchased by PlayStation or someone, and that entity not being interested in their Western studios. Even with that context, it is still insane that this studio, and that really does kind of prove what he's saying is true, I think. 
that they really just never frankly respected any of these studios. I think that is clear yep. as day, especially with this gentleman coming out. I don't think this is uh, uh, some sort of earned employee or something. I think he's just being straight up honest, and he just felt like that, frankly, Japan side of Square just never cared. And I do remember back in the day, I think it was two... Was it? Yeah, it was the it was the remake of Tomb Raider. I want to say, yep. and I remember that specifically. Uh, I think it was an IGN article back then. I think I was like in high school or something. I don't even remember. And I saw the article. Tomb Raider is a disappointment, according to Square Enix. And it was probably much more detailed than that. But they did always kind of talk about the Western titles that way, where it was really never good enough. They never really kind of cared about them, and. I didn't think it was this bad. I th- you know, I thought it was bad. But the things he's detailing here, it's almost as if it's almost as if it was like some sort of second family that Square Enix never wanted to begin with or something, even though that they willfully bought them. I don't I don't understand. But what what did you think of all this? Yeah, in hindsight, you're right. It seems like the Western Division was the black sheep at Square. And you did kind of notice that a lot of these games were being like talked about in this way, that they were disappointments, but like putting it all together in hindsight, it's like, Oh yeah. I don't really remember them saying anything about like their, you know, Jap- the games come out of Japan. Right. No, it, it seemed like it was mostly the, um, the Western games. And like, I, who, who's the other guy that's uh, doing this article? Um, the, uh, the so the James team. bachelor is the one, um, detailing James bachelor, thank yeah. you. Um, what they're what they're talking about like three hundred million in comparison to uh, one point you know, three the, the one billion dollars <laughs> yeah is insane to think about when you have IP um, having first of all having the cultural cash like Tomb Raider just saying to mm-hmm. reach being able to say we have Tomb Raider I think almost alone is three hundred million dollars like just yes. buying IP yes. is like worth three hundred million so they just went fucking just take just take it like we just don't we don't even let's not even debate it forget forget alone that laura is like a gaming icon yeah for a icon, second. definitely there's there's also like right now works for a sequel to a hollywood movie starring uh, award-winning alicia vikander yeah right like that has enough presence for for the IP of Tomb Raider. You're right, to alone to be worth 300 million. And you've also got, you know, Deus Ex Shore, like maybe more of a of a sleeper hit. Like people love that game, but Definitely. like, it, sure, that's gonna be not enough to be like boosting it. Maybe I don't know. Uh, but like Guardians of the Galaxy, that was critically loved enough, right? I don't know. You, in, insane to think about and then the, you know that leads to the other conversation that is going on on twitter right now is like why doesn't square just sell to sony and i think there's enough people out there that are arguing the other way why they they shouldn't sell and why i don't think square is selling i'm not well versed enough in that conversation to have like an educated take but i want to know um and i'm honestly i want to ask you what you think if, if square is actually going to sell to playstation is square Enix going to sell PlayStation? that's an interesting question um, I think you'd have to look at multiple factors. I think PlayStation, PlayStation is it is hard to predict PlayStation only for the fact is sure. they seem to be going at their own pace. Let's not forget that it's still frankly unbelievable. And this last week went through Bungie is officially owned by PlayStation and they got the most sweetheart of sweetheart deals. We are going to eject, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on the, uh, what is it? Like three, was it $3 billion or some insane number? Bungie, uh, purchase, but yeah, so they got the most sweetheart of deal, right? In the form of, yeah, we're going to purchase you and you can just do whatever you want. I don't think any analyst out there would have bet that if PlayStation bought anyone, they would go. We don't care about your game. We just need your help making online a service. You can keep doing Crazy. whatever you want. I don't. We don't really care. We just want your know-how. There's not a per. Yeah, three point six billion dollars. By the way, three point six billion dollars is how much they they spent. And that and they literally were given that and 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 said, hey, oh by the way, we can go make more money because you can go make TV shows and movies. So like, 
I don't think there's anyone out there that can really be like, oh yeah, I, I saw that coming. So it's hard to really see where PlayStation's sitting in terms of what they're willing to buy. I really do think that they can eye up Square here. I want to, I always um, lead when I do all these speculation things that I never want any of these things to happen, but it's just, it's, it's business. So it's, 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 we're really just arguing like really high end economics, but I just always want to admit, like, I never really want people to be purchased. It's, it's annoying. Microsoft is, is egregious. I love Xbox. I'm an Xbox fan, but it's egregious when you're purchasing like half of the industry. It's, it's, it can, it can get a little messy, but. Uh, back to if PlayStation would buy them, I, I think they would only to diversify their holdings, but I don't think it's crazy. I, I do think it's crazy that they'd be like, yeah, we don't want your Western studios. I was like, that is an interesting thing to hear with the rumors that they are eyeing them up to buy them. I think it's obvious. Someone is buying Square. They would not have done this without being bought. So someone's buying them. Now it's the question wow. of who. And I really do think it's probably going to be PlayStation. This makes this this shows like, all right, uh, first off, they have all these deals with Final Fantasy VII Remake, Final Fantasy XVI. They've clearly loved their Final Fantasy name. I think um, a lot of higher-ups want Final Fantasy to be attributed to PlayStation again. So what better way than to fucking buy them? So I, I don't think it's crazy to say it. I think it's probably more likely that PlayStation buys them than anyone else. Because again, they would not have sold, even though this article does point into why it happened a little better, but they still would not, even with all this bad stuff happening, they still would not have sold arguably some of their most valuable RP, frankly. I mean, they have Final Fantasy, but Jesus, they don't... I mean, Tomb Raider is huge, so I, I really don't understand. $300 million. It, it is nonsense. So someone is going to purchase the studio. The answer is, is who is it going to be? And it's probably going to be PlayStation. Xbox can't well, touch them. Nintendo, I don't think, is really in the game to really buy anyone right now. Yeah. I don't think they care. I think they want to do their Nintendo thing. That's kind of the argument there is, like, aside from Final Fantasy games, like, look at, like, the games that they're releasing now. And, like, when I think, I mean, is Octopath Traveler? I was just uh, about to is, say that. Anywhere else, <laughs> right? Like, Octopath Traveler? <laughs> tri like, Triangle Strategy, like, like, that game, isn't that game only on Switch as well? Like... Uh, we tend to think of Square as a PlayStation thing, but like I don't know, I feel like they're they're like Dragon Quest. I think though, yeah, like those games I consider to be like more focused on Nintendo than anything else. Yeah, so like it, I don't know. Like, well, I, they I'm started with with convinced. Nintendo, right? Like yeah. NES and all that. That's where they started, but it just seems like they are barely playing ball with them anymore. And yes, you were correct. Sure. Dragon Strategy is only for Nintendo Switch, so it isn't crazy to say. And they did make like Bravely Default and stuff like that for like the DS back in the day, so. Sure, sure. It's not insane to be like, hmm, maybe Nintendo is eyeing them up, but I don't know. It's Nintendo hasn't really been loose with the checkbook. So like, well, I bring up Nintendo for the fact that like, like I'm I'm still not convinced that Square is looking to sell. Really, with the even with the three hundred or the three hundred million Eastern dollars division. To, yeah, really, really. So so what what would, what guess... would back that up for you? Okay, well now I'm. Now you're convincing me the other way. Like you don't offload an entire Western division for for three hundred million dollars, like, such low right. money. For, yeah, because you don't want to sell. And I did not know their headcount. He says there was a thousand people working for them. Insane. Even if it's close to that, even if it's a like eight hundred people, that alone is still worth three hundred million dollars. So it's like, yeah, where is the math? Like it has this. This is. This is like this. This is the only thing that makes sense to me. There's, there's just no way that their lawyers were like, or sorry, like their accountants and stuff were like, uh, yeah. So yeah, we've evaluated all this and we think we could sell it for three hundred million. Like, there's just no way there's an accountant out there that'd be like, yeah, all those values were worth three hundred million dollars. So it, the only way this even makes sense to me is Square is selling. Yeah. Now the answer is to yeah, and I really think at this point it's probably PlayStation just to be able to to snag up someone else because um sure. phil spencer put it this way and i think it's interesting way to think about these acquisitions even though i don't like them and it's kind of gross when you really sit down and think about it but he put them in a way that hey when i was it's either we buy this and we know games or apple buys them or 
Google buys them or insert giant company, Black Rock, some random entity with endless checkbooks. Can, it goes and buys them. So in their point Ten of seconds. view, they're doing the and I'm for audio listeners, heavy air quotes here, the virtuous thing. Uh, let's you know, I'm not trying to paint this in some sort of savior light here, but I do I do understand like that point of view of being like, look, we need to buy them because someone is going to someone else mm-hmm. will. So we got to do it. And I really think that's kind of probably the main motivation behind Microsoft buying them, because it was really probably just to make sure Apple doesn't buy them or someone else doesn't buy them. They were probably like, we got to buy them, because if we let someone else get them, we've lost everything that they own. So I do think we're in a similar situation here with PlayStation. And I think all these deals I mean, they even, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Isaac, uh, I'm pretty sure they even mentioned that Final Fantasy 16 is a exclusive, not timed, yes. not, yeah, not console, like it is exclusive to PlayStation. So that even kind of paints it an even maybe lighter brush to kind of make the case for maybe it is them. I don't know. Any last about, thoughts with the story? 16? I believe 16 might be a console exclusive. Is it actually. console? I can't remember if it's console exclusive or if it's... Here we go. According to Harding rules, uh, Final Fantasy 16 will be exclusive to the PlayStation 5 for its first six months. Oh, and so then, it is still uh, timed. I, Why did I know? Then oh. it will come to PC after. Oh, okay, so it is console yeah. exclusive for six months and then PC. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. But this makes sense because PlayStation, I think, is starting to, to diversify their PC library, and we're seeing that more and more and more. Yeah, so. and I, and again, I don't think it's insane to be and they buy them and be like, hey, we don't have JRPGs really, so this is our way of getting them. We don't. We used to be like the king of the the JRPC scene, and we're barely looked at anymore. So maybe this is another thing, kind of fueling them. Are we now, going to wake up on a Friday morning this year to oh. a PlayStation blog saying, "Welcome to the family, Square Enix"? Enix. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, this was Quotas. when was? Damn it. I am terrible with dates, Christian. You'll know that. But Square sold Eidos when? That might give us a time frame when to expect this. Anyway, February? I think so. Yeah. Yes. March. Uh, no. May. May. Okay. Well, yeah, it looks like May. Eh, what is time? So, yeah, what is pandemic? time, right? But yeah, so it looks like May. So. Yeah. Pr- yeah. I think before the end of the year, or or there might be some sort of interesting deal that they they're taking this long to because apparently, I mean, it does. If they sold that and they were preparing to sell, that can take up to like six months. So we're looking at November possibly because it can take six. It can take up to like six months to be like, okay, well, you know, they like have a bunch of accountants in a fucking room talking about, all right, we got this much, and how much is the value and things. So. That yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked if if by um by November we we hear it happened. We have to look at fiscal cal- calendars for this. That's one true. Or, one or you know one or, one of the board meeting for <laughs> you know confidence. Yeah, yeah. When they have to disclose this to like the entity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, now, I so Christian, I asked you a question before we went live because I didn't want to be wrong about this, but I, I remembered that you were a FIFA fan from way back when when we did the early impressions of horizon for Ben west it's a great video and i wanted to bring this up only because i saw it was in the news and i did hear that it's a pretty big deal that they're doing certain things with the physics engine and they're adding uh uh the world cup and women's uh football section of the game is being rehashed a bit too and i just wanted to name a couple of these things off of Game is this oh, video games chronicle? This is by Chris Scullion. So these are some features in uh, detailed in the, the deep dive that uh, they recently did. Women's football. There's new movements, including three unique sets of movement archetypes based on height variants. I will be going over all of this, but I'll be going over the highlights. Technical dribbling, a new dribbling system that uses active touch system to calculate a player's path to the ball more intelligently. ML jockey, a new type of jockeying that uses machine learning. The jockeying player can turn it at an angle to improve their defensive coverage. A new player acceleration system called Accelerate. Players with similar speeds can move differently across the pitch depending on how they accelerate. 
You can fall into three categories. Controlled, accelerating in a normal matter. Explosive, shorter, more agile players who have a quick burst of acceleration than slow down. And then lengthy, taller players who need more distance to get going, but can eventually catch up and pass anyone. And then there's power shots by pressing L1 and R1 while shooting. Players pull off a powerful shot that needs a lot of time to wind up. And redesigned set pieces. Free kicks that have been changed to let you choose the right stick to determine whether players, uh, player kicks the ball, affecting curl and elevation. E elevation. Players can make a defender lie down behind the wall to defend against low free kicks. Penalties are now based on timing with a composure ring determining your accuracy and power. Now, not only you can talk about this, you can talk about FIFA, anything about FIFA. You know, yes. don't don't put any constraints on you. I'm just curious. First off, can you explain to me um, why the World Cup thing was a big deal? Because I did see a lot of oh, people huge. very excited about this. So can you kind of detail to me why that was a big deal? I'm sorry, if you uh, World Cup in general or World Cup in in the game? In the game. If I'm am I correct in this that like uh, I saw like two weeks ago, I think that something about the World Cup in FIFA 23 was a big deal. Am I am I did I misinterpret something probably? Ooh, I mean, I miss I missed this conversation happening. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, a big asterisk. I'm a, I'm a casual FIFA casual FIFA, game enjoyer. casual FIFA. So you're yeah, not you're not, not one hard. of those you're not one of those no. out in tournaments or anything. Well, hold on. I'm oh. gonna walk away from my camera for a second, okay? Oh, oh! I bet he's got a soccer ball. Laser. He's gonna come back bringing soccer ball. Or, or what if he brings a FIFA World Champ? Whoa! This is cool. Whoa! Okay, so, that's pretty sick. Like, if, if I'm interested in anything FIFA related, it's it's you know the the real life aspects of the game, which then right. make me a casual enjoyer of, of the games. Um, so I missed this conversation around the World Cup. Uh, just in general, I in, could be in FIFA 23, I could be. But the fact that they're introducing, so. no, no, no I, I believe you and I trust you. <laughs> but I want everyone to know I'm a casual enjoyer of the games. But I, I, I do want to speak to the things that I can talk about for FIFA 23, if I, yeah, if I may, please. One of the things that uh, that was in this that I want to highlight is mm. uh, a huge one for for jockeying. Players jockeying in the box now put their hands behind their back to avoid handballs. I think is a big one. Um, speaks for itself. Obviously, you want to avoid handballs. You want to avoid penalties. Um, coolest way to do that, which is I'm surprised that I like, never did it. Yeah, now, so I was about to, to I was about to ask that. Um, that was I was kind of surprised that wasn't already a thing, but interesting. Yeah. Um, some other things I want to touch on too is the is the way they approached their kind of AI machine learning um, is by capturing every. Usually, they capture stuff that that's real time, uh, like actual in game stuff. And what they did was. Um, fit out players they had uh like you know exhibition matches 11 versus 11 but they also did, did, did this for women's football so that everything is uh, is hyper specific according to um whether it's women's or men's football but it, it reading stuff like this where it's uh, it's height and that has a huge impact on the way uh players play and move but, but beyond that small things like passing or even first touches um hyper motion i think was a thing introduced in fifa 22 and it makes the game feel a lot different than previous FIFA generations or previous FIFA games. And you can feel that difference when you're getting a first touch in the game or when you're passing. Like Virgil van Dijk is going to pass different than Alexander, Trent Alexander, Alexander Arnold. Like those small things that like you notice when you're watching a real game of football now like in your controller makes a huge impact on like the feel of the game. And so for them to do Hypermotion 2.0 with a new generation of consoles, FIFA 23, I think is going to play a huge part in, in making that game feel different. And there's like a lot of things that are making this game feel different. You know, redesigning set pieces altogether, power shots, a brand new way to shoot balls that it's like high risk, high reward by pushing the, the L1, R1 together, where you have to focus a lot on timing and, and power. Cool stuff. And it's, it's the stuff that you need to introduce um, in a FIFA game where like the big argument is like, well, it's the same game, just $70 again or whatever. So, so really we'll quick, start. if I may interject, I do feel like, and I used to work at a GameStop just for uh, reference. Mm -hmm. um, I would never really get the complaints from <laughs> FIFA people about it releasing every year. Now, is that maybe just because I wasn't in a huge region with FIFA? Like I had a lot, I, was, I would sell a lot of FIFA. I was in a pretty big GameStop, so I would sell a good bit of them, but 
I, I would get a lot of people not necessarily happy with the NBAs, not necessarily happy with the Maddens, but I rarely got it with FIFA. Is it just because they've nailed it so much, or was it just I maybe had a skewed uh, base to even go from? Maybe it's skewed. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the complaints usually happen within the community itself and like behind the scenes. Like you're not really hearing a lot of vocal people, based on what I've seen. Like you know talk publicly about like their distaste with fifa like it's a lot of it is like when you're actually playing and you're like on a headset and playing with someone else like man i miss the old fifa or uh, oh. man this new one ain't hitting the same can, like can that you, happens can you very but, like, quickly tell me what old fifa means is that a particular year or yeah just like everyone has their favorites of when like they thought like, the, the game was the best like okay. uh oh wait there's the uh the brazil world cup is is a great one people love that one as well um yeah and like and most recently there's been a lot of conversation around like it not transforming enough like updating the rosters is, isn't that great or specifically like the the switch ports are literally the same wow. game yeah i've i've um, um i've heard about no this. changes yeah. whatsoever which yeah. is disgusting and you yeah. can blame that on, on fifa as well fifa is mm. a terrible company by the way yeah so uh, uh, and another thing i want to bring up what was what did you make of first off i've i've re- i've um i don't remember what it was but i i remember uh reading and listening to something about fifa First off, holy shit! Maybe all of that should be illegal. Second, um, yes. uh, what made you? What were your interpretations? I know this is a little bit old news, but I, I want I didn't have someone to talk who knew FIFA. What did you think about them straight up being like? First off, EA and FIFA themselves both kind of saying the same thing, where we don't need you. Both saying that to each other. What did you make of that? Basically, them having a very public breakup. It makes sense, and it, it like it's a thousand percent proof that both like e, is EA the worst company in the world? I'd argue no, because like no, there's a lot more worse shit than EA. <laughs> go look, go look at what FIFA is, is doing right now. The World Cup it, is in Qatar this year, which Qatar. Both Let, lot, if you don't know what Qatar, Qatar is, yeah. please go read first. First look off, you should know what Qatar is. But now that you're educated, now put a World Cup there. That is. F- that is fucked up what they do about the World okay. Cup. First of all, forget entire just for a moment, forget entirely for a second that, you know, it's in Qatar that it's I- interrupting schedules in the middle of December. Whatever. Player schedules, that's one thing. Forget for a second that they uh specifically chose Qatar um to profit off of oil money. Forget that for a second. Really? You know? Oh. Like, forget the Wow. Forget I missed the, that. Forget, Holy shit. Forget the ecosystem. Let's think about how consistently every time they are choosing uh, World Cup locations um, in recent years, especially in Qatar, look at it right now. They are having to build these stadiums so quickly that there is no yep. safety measurements whatsoever. It is l- being built off the backs of poor people. It is essentially slave labor. It is people essentially slave labor. Like, it, and I know people. Labor. I know. Well, I know people are like, "Come on, guys, I'm not look shitting you." Look it up. Look at how much they're being paid. Look at all of the other underlying economic situations that are first off happening in Qatar just without them intervening. Now imagine there is a giant tournament happening inside of Qatar. Yep. Hundreds of people dying just to build these stadiums for entertainment that they then tear down uh, right after it's over. And now you're left with just like nothing. It's 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 insane to think about. So FIFA sucks is is my takeaway. But also uh Back to games, I guess. I don't know how to transition back to FIFA. <laughs> you transition just like you did, brother. Sometimes it gets serious. Hey, I never liked it when people complain when we talk politics. It's inherent in video games. Relax. You have to. But please, to. go ahead. Uh, the I guess one of the biggest complaints about FIFA right now uh, is they just released uh, stats for players. And Kylian Mbappe is the highest rated player in fifa 23 okay 92 score uh and so the conversations are, that's happening right now is like it should not be mbappe he's he's on the cover for the third year uh which is cool um uh but also like this the, the conversation is like why not someone else why not not the cover story but like why is he the highest rated player why not like benzema or I, i'm getting too nitty-gritty no with, no no, with no you're fine is it a balancing issue is that is that is that what people are saying or is it just like oh, that's a little unrealistic that he's the highest one not unrealistic per se because he is one of the best players in the world i have heard his name so i was like he has to be a big deal if i heard him (laughs) yeah a little bit of balancing but also it's like you have to think about the way fifa structures like their live service portion which is the ultimate team which if you look up 
the category in Steam, you can find FIFA under gambling. Essentially, like that's the way. Ultimate I remember. Works out. I remember you seeing money to get players. I remember seeing. I could be wrong about this, but I remember seeing a clip from uh, someone playing FIFA, and it straight up looked like a slot machine. So like, yes. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And that makes a lot of sense when you're like, it's straight up next to gambling. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Cause just go look up clips. Maybe even p type in uh, achievers. Type in like FIFA gambling. I'm sure it'll come up. It literally looked like this guy was playing like a casino game. And I was like, yeah, yeah this is. If you oh. if you remember Battlefront two loot boxes, imagine that but worse. That's FIFA. That's ultimate team. And 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 what's so fascinating is it seems like no one cares. What it why why? Is it just the game's just so good or is it just addicting and they people are just like I can't they, they get it, enough? It's both. It's both. It's it's terrible, it's addicting, and yet like it's fun to build your ultimate team. It's yeah. I mean I play ultimate I dabble in it. I don't put any money on it. That's the principal thing that I do. And I have more fun playing just like exhibition matches with friends yeah. anyway. But yeah, I don't know. Like it's it's the small adjustments that make individual players play on the controller that i think has the biggest impact for me um, when i'm playing the game and like if they if they make, continuously make these small adjustments like i'll probably buy the next one. Oh my god I, i'm sorry to bring this back up but i have to read this this is uh go read this this is on forbes this is should fifa and qatar pay migrant workers compensation by samindra uh kunti kunti I'm, i apologize i fucked that up um, I'm going to read literally just the first paragraph. Everyone else go read this as well. At a business conference in California last month, FIFA president Gianni Infantino downplayed the deaths and hardships of migrant workers in Qatar who built the infrastructure for the 2022 World Cup. He said, quote, when you give work to somebody, even in hard conditions, you give him dignity and pride, end quote. He then added, now 6,000 might have died in other works and so on, but FIFA is not the police of the world, end quote. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh People should be in jail. God, FIFA. that Legit. is that that is that sounded like a villain from like a fucking Marvel movie. And you'd be like, tune it back some. That was a little unrealistic. Like that was fucking that was uh, and that was a bit on the nose, buddy. Holy shit. Yeah, I, I won't harp on, harp on this anymore, uh, but I'll say this. Legit, FIFA is one of the worst companies in the world. People should be in jail for what they're doing. I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, Isaac Christian. Fans of Destiny 2 ask why it seems there's less communication from the studios, and they got an answer in a post on Reddit detailing why Bungie may have seemed to back off on talking on the community. Uh, the community manager, DMG04, had a statement. Quote, Here's the thing. The harassment we've spoken to isn't just rude replies on Twitter or vague comments. There have been real threats towards our people and our studios. We're taking them seriously, which is leading to an amount of reduced communications as the team plans future protections, strategies to help avoid these sorts of things. I'll be very clear in saying that I appreciate the studio and the amount that it's helped me personally. After some serious harassment towards me and my family, I'm taking time off in part of this. In, sorry, in part because of this. Just because you can't see it directly in a given tweet or form reply doesn't mean that it didn't happen. None of this is meant to be a punishment to the people who can leave clear and respectful feedback for our developers, mind you. End quote. It, it, there's a fuller uh, statement. Um, I believe I left a little bit out just because it was a little lengthy, but uh, it, that got to that point across, I feel. Um, I find it uh, very interesting that they, first off, had to straight up just make a statement on this. They... They had to be like, the reason we're not talking is because people are dicks and we can't talk about this stuff because people get way too into this. Uh, I'm a huge Destiny 2 fan. I'm, I'm a little uh, off of the game right now just because I, I didn't really dig the last season. But I find it uh, frankly interesting. And this might be maybe the first time that this has been this public. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but I don't think there's another time where uh, a community manager has just straight out come out and be like, eh, they, uh, mm, this is probably I'm going to word this incorrectly. But they have said the reason that they are not giving more feedback is because specifically of the harassment, although I'm sure it has happened before. I feel like this is the first time someone, especially as big as Bungie, came out and said, we're not talking anymore because, frankly, it's scary as fuck to talk to you people. What do you think? You, you kind of got a little bit of this with Sony Santa Monica, uh, with God of War, where 
you know that's a very that's a very good through line Uh, please continue yeah because i think saying people are dicks is a little bit of like an understatement like yeah i think so too but like people are legit the coolest thing bungie has done period uh with with this is seek legal action against one streamer who is continuously harassing them i did Uh, see this i hope this this trend continues because people get away with too many things in like fanboyism and like the, the way they're like they're reactionary on twitter and i per i will cite one incident that just happened with god of war bef- when it when it turned out that there was no state of play on what people were expecting it to be a state of play for god of war okay there were multiple people who harassed developers of the game who were sending pictures of their dicks to them and demanding that they release uh, god of war release date now and it's like not only is that wrong but they should be fined and or like maybe jailed or some sort of criminal kind action of harassment to definitely yes, happen yeah a thousand percent because like people need to understand that that shit it cannot fly that is not okay to do at all and so i look to bungie one saying that they're like gonna talk because bungie has like such a toxic fan base sometimes when they, they do they don't release con- like when they do communicate they hate and when they don't communicate they also hate and so why communicate it at all if they're, if they're going to receive this level of hate? And yeah, so the, it, the it really is. Just to not do it. Yeah, it really is a lose-lose kind of here with Bungie. I do agree a lot with, yeah, I, I, when they communicate, they get shit. And when they do, it, it, or sorry, when they don't, they get shit. So it, at the end of point, it's just like, we're tired and we just can't deal with this anymore. So, yes, I did find it interesting. A, a part of me did want to go like, so my first reaction to this, I was like, all right, well, it's the internet. It's kind of what you sign up for, especially being a community manager. And then I went, but there's probably only so much someone can take. There's And, and I did uh, resonate with him when he said this. This kind of helped me put into perspective a, um, a bit more. Uh, he said, just because you can't see it directly in a given tweet or form reply doesn't mean it didn't happen. So, it, and, and it's, not, it's not like we're going through every reply. They probably see heinous shit that we never see. So, like... I assume that the, that someone up there, maybe it was maybe it was DMG, maybe it was someone higher up, just went like, clearly this isn't healthy for you guys, or someone maybe had a complaint and was like, this is getting too much, and they were just like, let's scale this back. And I think we, and I don't know if this had anything to do with it, but I don't, and I don't know if you saw this, Christian, but the newest season, they did almost no hype for it. They didn't really talk about it that much. They yes. they just kind of really shadow dropped it. Um. And at the time, they kind of gave a reason where it was like, well, we're uh, experimenting with new ways of, basically new ways of using pre-R. But maybe it was a little bit of that and a little bit of this, where it's like, well, you know, when we talk about stuff, you guys get way too uh, into it, I guess, for lack of a better word. Yeah, and and I don't know. Like, I I look to Halo Infinite's team, 343, and... First of all, I think it's, very, it's also really cool on the other side of the spectrum to see communication on such a clear level. But then yeah. even when they are clear, they still get like a ton of hate. Like the replies are insane. And then you get articles that like kind of mis- like are being misrepresented based on what they're actually saying. Like the most recent one was saying, uh, you know, what before they dropped their their flight for um, co-op. Halo co-op. Right. You know, they specifically said they were going to drop it by the end of the by the end of X week. Um, and you had multiple articles on the first day of the week coming out saying like, oh, it's still not here. Where is it? Oh. And it's like, well, you know, the PR team sp- specifically said, expect it sometime by the end of the week. And then it did. It, sh- it dropped that Friday. And so I don't know. There's a certain trend of like jumping on things to hate. And, you know, SEO plays a big part in like online portions where like Definitely. we have to be the first. To, to, yeah. And a lot of stuff is reactionary and inflammatory. And sadly, it's just the way it goes in the industry. And. Bungie's answer is that it shouldn't be this way and so I respect them yeah and again I think we talked about this a little bit um with when we talked about Rockstar but this is one of the biggest and arguably the most transparent studio maybe out there it's, it's being transparent this is what they're doing they're just being a transparent in a way that probably people don't want but they're being clear like hey we're backing away from this because you guys are way too much and I kind of respect it honestly like I, I, you can only take so much so my best goes out to everyone. We were given an early preview of the UI of PSVR 2 by PlayStation oh. over on the PlayStation vlog, and they detailed quite a few features you can expect on your new headset. See-through view, which will allow you to turn on your cameras on the headset to be able to see through your headset. 
They will have a broadcast capability that will film you if you have a webcam attached to your system. You can customize your play area by using uh, the controllers. Um, you can map out the surroundings around you and give a full map of your playable space. And there are two modes that were announced, VR and cinematic modes, should delight some techie achievers out there. So the VR mode is, of course, the mode that you're going to play VR games in. But the cinematic mode will allow you to view a PS5 UI and a non-VR game and media content on a virtual cinema screen. Content will be displayed in 1920 by 1080 HDR with a 20 uh, uh with a 24 to 60 hertz frames or sorry six, 24 to 60 hertz and also 120 hertz obviously depending on what you're playing. Isaac Christian, first off, this got me a little more excited with uh PSVR. I was already you know I was I was like excited like yeah I'll definitely get one but now with everything added oh, yeah. I'm like this is pretty cool. I I did not think about the the cinema screen. That sounds honestly yes. the coolest thing. And honestly, the um, the customizable play area. So they they showed a picture of this on the PS Blog Achievers. If you want to look it up, just the look up PlayStation UI. Uh, and they have a picture, and you can use the controller to essentially make a make everywhere that I guess you can walk and what the camera should observe. And it was very cool. He was using the Dual Sense to kind of map out the ground and show, so you can like. You can customize your play space if you have like maybe like an L-shaped couch like I do, and you're like, well, I can't move to this area, so you block it off or something. And I thought that was one of the coolest things about yeah. this, but one of the uh, my highly anticipated thing is the cinema screen. It sounds pretty cool, but what did you think? So the uh, play space and the see-through mode uh, views are both ripped straight from the the, the quest. Yes, I, I, I think I, the which... quest had exactly a cinema screen, right? No, 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 like the the playable space oh the playable it does space have the screen as well yeah oh, it playable does. Space okay. is, it, is ripped straight from the quest as well as the see-through view which i think are, are are two of its best like just for ease of use features yeah and uh, having those things on psvr is is fantastic um and it's gonna be great i think especially if you're using just one cord and you want it to be as easy as to use as possible like having these things is fantastic but there are two sleeper hits in this that i want to touch on um one i want to start with is the um streaming which is absolutely huge being able to stream natively from your vr headset straight using the playstation 5 and if you look at the screenshots on the blog it's usual utilizing the webcam the new playstation webcam the ps5 and yeah. it looks like and it looks like there may be like some native green screen effects going on that's working directly with the system I mean, I could be wrong. It could be the streamer. You know, it's just a mock-up. They have a green screen behind them, and they're using an effect somehow. However, being able to stream directly with the console is going to be huge for getting, what do you want to call it, free press for PSVR. Think about all the games that are going to be streamed natively on the console. It is so hard to stream PC VR games. It is complicated depending on what kind of headset you're using having to do if you want to do a quest streaming which is still you know popular as well you have to get separate apps and just to use all your your functions and get be able to have stream see them for you and for you to see chat but this natively is going to be huge and again it's going to be huge for people who like are thinking about buying the uh, the vr headset and that may not like be totally sold they see people streaming the game it's going to be huge for that and just big for streamers. The other thing I want to touch on real quick too is the cinematic mode, which is you're right, is also like the it's probably the cool. biggest thing here, because the PSVR one headset in cinematic mode wasn't very good. The Quest Two has this as, as well for like you know watching YouTube or, or movies and stuff, and it's better, but it isn't like I'd rather just watch on my TV because my TV looks better. But 1080 HDR with you know up to 120 hertz depending on what you're watching, it's it's really big. It's, it's cool. really big. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I agree with everything you said. I, I, I haven't really dabbled with the Meta Quest, but I can't, I can't, so I can't really speak to most of these features. But I do agree. I honestly, I didn't really think about it being as big of a deal. But now that you've mentioned, yeah, you can broadcast yourself while you film, and you can natively, and this will get people more interested in the VR potentially because it is easily streamable. So it's easy to click on a stream and watch your favorite X streamer play X game. And you're like, Oh, well, I kind of want this thing. And you, you eventually get one now. And yeah, so that's actually a good point. And that might, that might have been the, uh, driver to getting that thing on there. Cause people were just like, we have to make it easy for people to show cool games. Cause, uh, mm. I remember, um, I don't, again, don't remember who said this. This was years ago though, but, um, 
uh, they said it's hard to sell VR because you can't make a yes. VR commercial, right? It's hard to be like, look, you're in the world. Like, but, and I've seen it firsthand because that, but pre COVID, uh, but when I worked at GameStop, right. we had a VR headset and like it really was like a, like they, it was like, uh, uh, changed uh, my life. Yeah. It, it really does change people's perspective. Like I've seen people put it on and, and say how much, and I, and I sell to them that day just because it's just that, that compelling. But, you can't do that to a commercial, especially post COVID, even though a lot of people are easing up on COVID restrictions and things like that. I don't think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, let's share these headsets between each other, my friend, stranger. So I don't, I think we'll have issues with that. And yeah, like I said, it, it, it's going to be, it's going to have problems commercially because it's hard to say, look how cool this is in a commercial with a headset and you can't really yes. see what's going on. But the most jarring thing, actually, from this PS blog, Christian, I want to bring up, um, still no price. Still no price. No date. This is going to be expensive. It's this be expensive. thing is going to be probably as much as the PlayStation 5. What do you think? Absolutely. At, at least. At least, I, right. I'm, I'm betting yeah. somewhere around $500 to $600. Like, you have to sell this thing at a loss, I think. Yes, you um, do. Like, that's, that's how these things usually go. Um, but I don't think it's going to be as hefty of a, of a price as like something like the Vive, or what? I'm sorry, what is the what is the high end one? Is it the Vive? The Vive is yes, yes. The, that's the, the one with finger the, tracking that was oh, made for like uh, Half Life. No, that, that the, uh, that's the um. Oh Jesus! The why am I blanking on this name? That's the Steam VR one. The fucking. Let's look this up. We yeah, look. look it up. I'm not a big VR guy, so I always struggle thinking of these. But um. God damn! It's Steam, uh, Steam makes it and everything. Index, the index. The index. Jesus, there we the go. Valve index. My God, like I've sold those before. I can't believe I forgot about it. If you look at the specs for the PSVR two, it is on par, maybe a little bit less in some regards, a little bit better in others with the Valve index. But there is no way Sony is going to charge a thousand dollars with this thing, considering you also have to buy a five hundred dollar console. I yeah. think they have to sell it a loss. So I think you're a thousand percent right. It'll at least cost the high end price of a PS5, which is $500. Yep. I, I, I really do think so. I think anyone thinking this is going to be anywhere less than that, I think you're in a reckoning. I think it's going to be 500, um, 400, maybe if COVID didn't happen, but 500 for sure, especially with parts, especially with how expensive things are. I just think there's just no way, and I still think that's at a loss. Technically, they're selling PlayStations at a loss too when they have to sell and then ship them out and all these things. So that's probably still at a loss. Which, which I'll be, I'm very curious to see how much. I don't know if this is out there yet, but I wonder how much this costs. Uh, if you bought the parts into, you know, they do that like they did with the Series X. Like, oh, this is how much it would be if you made one. Um, I'm curious if that's out there too, because I imagine that thing is not. I remember when they first debuted, like the first debut of the PlayStation blog, and they detailed everything. Um, and back then, uh, my co-host Alex and I, I was naming, and every time I named off a feature, I was like, "Cha-ching!" Like "Cha-ching!" Like like the the number just slowly rising because of all these features it has. And yeah, I think you're, I think you're on the money. There's just no way this thing is not five hundred bucks. And I'm buying it still. And I'm buy buying it. it for sure, buddy. <laughs> I'm for sure Horizon buying this thing. Awesome. Yes, I need to play that. I need to play it, and I'm hoping, because I probably will never uh, get something to play it, I hope they port Half-Life Alex to the PSVR 2. That'd be really cool, but yes. I don't know. Oh, uh, that's one thing that we were talking about on Twitter, is the biggest thing, I think, one of the biggest things, I think, for PSVR 2, whether, like, that might determine its success, I'm not, I'm not sure, is whether or not it connects to a PC. Yes, there that's is, right. Yeah, yeah, you did mention this. We had an exchange with Emmett because he, for some fucking reason, was like, oh, should I buy an Oculus? I was like, no, Emmett, you shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in hindsight, though, with your PC thing, yeah, if that's an interest of you, yeah, you, maybe you should. I don't know. I, I'm just not in that space to, to weigh in on it. But that is a good point. If this thing does not connect to a PC, no, maybe it's not as enticing yeah. as a lot of people might see it. Um, is that your think? Is that your make or break, or do you think they could still live a little bit without it? It's it's not my make or break because it seems like Sony is doubling down even more so than PSVR one with what they want to do I in terms so of first party software. Yeah. Like I think they have big plans, and like that's going to be huge. That is my make or break. Whether or not the the games are actually coming and they're consistent and they're high quality experiences, that will be whether or not the console lives or dies. The 
PC connection is is extra to me, but it goes a long way because I I don't want I don't want to have more headsets to do the same thing, which is play games. And if it connects to my PC and it lets me play Steam games, um, then that is awesome. If not, what I would love to see is is more high end experiences being ported from PC to PlayStation. And you mentioned the biggest one of all, which is Half Life Alex. That's that's the the big one I really do want. And I don't think it's out of the question. I know a lot of people are like, no, they want you to buy the Valve Index. I don't think Steam really cares. I think they're just like, oh, Yo, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll port it to you. Yeah, they make money off sales, and if they get a portion of sales from you know that port, I don't know how that'll, that'll work, but yeah, yeah. They, they'd do it. Yeah, they, I think they would, too. And uh, a PlayStation, just, just make a Vita. You're making this VR, too. Just make oh. a Vita. For love, for God's sakes, man. Jesus. Microsoft has posted their earnings, and they are interesting. For the fourth quarter of 2022, reporting revenue of a staggering $51.9 billion and a net income of $16.7 billion. But that isn't why uh, what we want to talk about. Let's talk about games. So the Xbox side of finance, hardware revenue fell 11% alongside a 6% dip in content and services. Microsoft attributed this to, quote, lower engagement hours and monetization, end quote. Across both first and third party titles, overall gaming revenue is down 7% year over year. To seemingly soften the blow, CEO of Microsoft gave an interesting number, quote, over 4 million people have streamed Fortnite to date, including over 1 million who are new to our ecosystem, end quote, using, of course, Xbox Cloud Gaming. And another thing uh, Sadia mentioned was, quote, Xbox Series S and X have sold more consoles life to date than any other previous generation, end quote. Now, the two major standouts uh, from this discussion that were not discussed were anything pertaining to the Activision Blizzard deal and more drawing, still no mention of Game Pass subscription numbers. The last time we were updated was in January. I, I wrote do, June for some reason. In January, when they reported 25 million active subscribers. All right, so Christian, this is a pretty big dip. 11% double-digit uh, drops in hardware sales, alongside 6% dip in their content and services. But then overall gaming revenue down 7% year over year. I don't think that's too crazy as long uh, because we're getting out of the COVID times. Yes. But still staggering to have to report that. Yeah. I mean, this is tough to talk about, I think, because there's a lot of things that play into this. And you mentioned is, the yeah. biggest one of all, I think, which is COVID uh, and, you know, trouble with all kinds of. Well, I don't know. Microsoft is also paying big money to jump the lines in terms of acquiring chips to make more consoles but like i still think it's tough like it's, sales are dipping and yet at the same time they're also selling the, the like record number of consoles ever and that isn't yeah. just like just uh um on the xbox side that's happening like with more, more consoles mm -hmm. but it's also like we're also in a time where like sales usually dip around this time too like that's one thing uh not mentioned here but like usually like in this time of year during summer like you'll see dips in the in gaming just in general um i don't know how much this covers the, the this quarter earnings but that's something to keep in mind and yet st it's still there's they're selling really well despite these losses so it's kind of tough to gauge yeah it's i don't think this is anything really to write home about or make a big deal about i think um the hardware revenue falling uh so substantially could be attributed to maybe just not being able to make enough i do know series s's are selling quickly but I'm pretty sure they're selling Series S's at a pretty substantial loss. So yeah. I don't necessarily think that's generating them any income. Um, they want to make money off Game Pass. They don't really care about the Series S. Uh, and the Series X, I know for a fact, whenever those are in stock, people buy them. So whenever those things are go uh, going and going. So I don't think they can just make enough Series X's. And I, I really think the Series S, they're probably, I wouldn't be shocked if they're selling that as a loss of almost $100 a system. So I really, mm. really don't think that'd be crazy because that thing is a beast in terms of what it can do. And it's only three hundred dollars and it's a little crazy. I'm shocked it's not four hundred bucks. But um, I think that's attributed to some of the hardware sales. I think that's um, I think the overall gaming revenue, seven percent is a little surprising. But I think, again, we're still a little inflated from COVID numbers. Everyone saw yeah. a huge boom from COVID. So it's just. It's hard. I think personally, it's hard to even make sense of a lot of these numbers because COVID, the chip shortages, there's so many outside factors. Shipping is one of the major things, too. How much yep. shipping costs right now from from China, of course, on boats, almost, I think, 4000 increases on shipping costs and things of that nature. 
uh, Sony having to buy. I know we're not talking about Sony, but Sony having to straight up ship systems out of a Boeing uh, seven, uh, um, oh, a yeah. giant Boeing uh, plane with just filled with PS fives to sell them. Like they have to pay for that. So that that hits all their money. But uh, I think Can I don't think there's being the pilot. I'm sorry. What's what's that? What you have? What? Oh, we're flying PS fives. Okay, all right. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> it's really far. I gotta go where? <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, yeah, that is it. <laughs> Imagine having that day. Be like, by the way, you're going to uh, ship a bunch of PS fives for Sony. It's like, uh, okay, cool. It paid regardless. But yeah, I don't think. Um, I think honestly, the most jarring thing is Game Pass. Why aren't we talking about Game Pass? Clearly, the yeah. reason we're not is because it's not impressive. So that that if there must not be a giant jump in subscription numbers to bring it up because they would they would it, if they could it must have dipped yeah yeah they they either dipped or have plateaued and i'm very curious how they're gonna i clearly i'm first i got too much in my mind one what's the magic number i'm very curious um i heard it might be 50 million active subscribers um i'm curious what's what's the number they're gonna hit to be like a major success and also i'm curious how much they want to charge because clearly they're charging less than what they want. So how much how much do they actually want Game Pass to do? Like when like when they hit that max number, when are they going to be like, boom, it's it's double the price now or five bucks more or, you know, kind of like the Netflix thing where like every few years they're like, it's a little more. It's a little more. Don't look at it. It's a little more. It's a dollar dollar. And eventually it's. Yeah, but they are hemorrhaging the price. users. Yes, that is not a good thing to bring up <laughs> in, in terms of uh, a model to find, as we're seeing with Netflix's constantly yeah. bleeding money. Uh, ever since really they've been a thing. This should be a quick one. Sticking with Microsoft, Xbox has implemented a way for shorter boot times. On the Xbox Series S and X, the new boot time is five seconds faster. It was already at an impressive 12 second boot time, but now we're looking at around eight seconds to boot up your system from a cold boot, so fully turn it off. <laughs> Note this is only if you have your energy saving, uh, saver settings turned off. Also, quickly, Xbox users are apparently also noticing a faster boot time as well. But I could not find official numbers, and I do not know if that's fully true. But I did see a couple people saying that it was, and I was like, okay, whatever. Um, that's really cool. I don't have anything to say about this. First off, I think this is a testament again to Microsoft's engineers. They probably have the best in the world. The for them to be able to patch in, like, yeah, it's now eight seconds from fully plugging it out your system and plugging it back in and turning it on. That's it's crazy. We. We are spoiled this generation. And oh, I, I, yeah. Like I, we don't think about that enough. Like, no. the loading times are insane. Like, I, I point to playing um, Demon Souls remake on PS5 and how how much the SSD changed my life in terms of loading up games. Microsoft has, like, always been almost, like, it seems like ahead of the curve, like, really excellent at, at their UI and, yeah. and, like, the engineering team, as you said, like, they're insane. One of the coolest things, I think, also in this update was that um, they updated a little bit of their UI to indicate, like, uh, like oh, Game Pass games. Like, thank you. Like, I forgot like, to what, add this. Uh, time... Yeah, you want, do you want to talk about that? No, no, please, please. You, you go ahead. You, you're nailing everything I was going to say. Yeah, well, the biggest one I think that I remember was that they, like, their little indicators straight on the Xbox dashboard, so you yep. can quickly see at a glance uh, when games are going to expire soon or if they're like no longer on Game Pass and you can click in and just on the dashboard see when things are leaving soon. Is Was there any more beside Game Pass? I think there might be. Um, so it, it, so there was already some stock ones saying like, oh, this is a Games with Gold title. This is a an enhanced X and S right. title. And then now they've added this was a Game Pass title. And now there is, I want to say, a like an alert square, meaning there's probably an issue. And I believe if you click on it, it goes you know, this is no longer in Game Pass, and they probably say, like, would you like to delete it, or you can buy it, or something like that. But that was, yeah, that was the, first off, that's very cool. And they've kind of nailed that UI with, at a glance, on my library, I could see what's enhanced for SNX and go, oh, let me download Resident Evil 2, because it's enhanced now, and I, and, and play through that again. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I've always been a fan of the UI. I know a lot of people don't like it. Uh, I think I'm just so used to it that whatever complaints they have, I just like uh at this point so i've always loved xbox's ui and uh yeah that's it I, I wish they would uh do something with achievements though please for the love of god do something with achievements we haven't seen a major update to achievements since 2013 since the xbox one really came out gotta get that gamer score up what do near fans love more than butts secrets of course mm. 
unraveling what's going on in the near community is mystery enough, but it seems that a user going by the name of Sad Fudigo, hopefully I didn't say something terrible, on the near Automata subreddit a few months back, posted a picture of a church and was confused about how their friend could not access it. Most people ignored this until a clip was made about the location of the church, and that has caused the community to explode and i do not mean this uh hyperbolically they, this has renewed the community the hunt uh for this is still ongoing as of recording uh lance mcdonald even uh on twitter poked fun at the situation reading quote someone randomly posted a video of the near automata subreddit showing they found a secret room in the copied city so far no one else has worked out how they managed to make this secret door appear Literally one person on Earth has accessed this room, and we are utterly or uttered mind blown. End quote. Uh, I just thought this was a fun thing. I always love including stories like this where just something crazy has happened, and everyone kind of has now banded together to uh to to make this like thing. I've saw a lot of pictures of like there's a Discord that a bunch of community members have, and they're chatting on there. Yeah. They're showing clips on how to get it. They I I read somewhere that someone. Uh, saw that they're on a ps4 and they know that like, there's no way that they modded this to happen so how did they get it to work and they're still trying to figure it's, out because apparently they can't even glitch through it or something like they can't even break through yes. the uh the actual uh collision to get into the room so they're, they they have no idea how it's gonna work the, the other thing is that like modders have pointed out that none of those assets like from that video exist in the game yes like, if you data mine yeah. like they can't they can't find that at all and yet at the same time like there's still like conversations happening like i don't know they somehow maybe is it blocked off somehow like if they can't even like glitch through and like there's there's still a lot of like speculation as to whether or not it's real or not but the fact that modders like can't decide and the fact that like yoko taro even tweeted about this that is, so like, yeah i did hilarious. i did forget to add this yoko taro himself uh, let me see if I can find the tweet. Do you have it on hand, Yoko Taro? Uh, no, I can look it up though. Let me see if I can. Find I mean, it. I mean, what you, Yoko Taro just says essentially like I can't, co I don't comment on this. That's right. That's right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it was like it, in the most Yoko Taro way <laughs> of, of addressing this, he just goes, "I don't talk about this." <laughs> so, no, well, sorry. He said, "Go see my uh, description in my bio, which reads, I, I, don't, I don't answer comments about yeah. prod any products. Ask the publisher." Man. Uh, you know i love that guy he is he is someone else man i, I love that dude but yeah. but yeah i loved seeing this as a as um I, I i you know i like it from afar i i enjoyed near i only played it the one time which i know is blasphemy oh, i know that is not beating the game i'm not beating the game <laughs> i said i played through it i didn't say it beat it um so okay, i know okay. that's blasphemy from e everyone i tell that to they go they do the same reaction iso christian please go on video and see what just happened to me like th that visceral guttural reaction that that i have not done it and i've i want to be frank i do want to kind of go back now this kind of got me a little excited i was like oh maybe i'll go back and do i don't know fucking bc or whatever the hell i gotta do i i, I did the first thing with uh to be so like yeah. I, I don't so even play through B after was which is a little bit different and you might be a little bit disappointed like on how like not that much of a difference there is no. but CDE are is like where like, oh okay this is a different game this is like on <laughs> this is an entirely different game there's okay. way more game than I thought there was like, cool. actually in this and then like the only difference in CDE is like there are very small things in the in the final credits that you can have like a save or whatever to like change like the ending and so you don't uh, have to like replay the entire thing just get those small changes really quickly i saw someone say that you you he said ugh, again i'm blanking on names this was a long time ago though so i don't blame myself too much but someone said uh you haven't beaten near automata until you've played the credits yes was, was, is that like is that like an e ending or something or it, that is, yeah if i remember right that is e ending and yes there's a certain thing that happens in the credits that is very definitive i have beaten this game okay okay it does get me a little excited especially because uh uh my uh, uh oh fuck <laughs> my co-host oh it's so good my co-host alex actually i don't know how much he beat of these but he like blew through this game i think he did like three or four of them i don't know if he got to e i'll have to ask him but 
that is uh i i do kind of want to bring him so may, maybe I'll, I'll 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 proclaim it today that i will i will try and see if i can get it downloaded see if i can get back into the game because i'm at the right at the smack dab had to pick it back up to get another ending or whatever yeah that's the news for the week. Now it's date updates. Isaac Christian has to leave very soon, so I will try to get this through quickly. Lord of the Rings Gollum was delayed a few months via the uh, game's official Twitter account. Uh, it was coming out September 1st. All they said was delayed a few months. No idea what that means, so we'll have to see when it's coming out. Very quickly, Who we have... This? <laughs> Who wants this? That's what I've said every single time it's been in the news. Uh, I, <laughs> I said, uh, I think last time I talked about this, like, yeah, my favorite part, Lord of the Rings, the small goblin man. I want to play as him. I want to be not intimidating. I want to hide at every chance I get. God, that sounds terrible. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, these are things coming to Stadia. I hate how they uh, put their stuff. So I'm going to. So this is launching this on Pro August 1st. Uh, Cal uh, Calico. Saints Row the Third Remastered, Monster Jam Steel Titans 2, uh, Shanty Half Genie Hero Ultimate Edition, Murder by Numbers, Welcome to Elk. Um, uh, July 28th. No, you're forgetting one. I did? Oh, sorry. Uh, Calico. Keep yeah, so I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Forgotten City is coming to Stadia July 28th. Yes. Play that the is, Forgotten City. Play the Forgotten City. So I played this on recommendation of both you and um, Emmett Watkins Jr. And I, I played it and I was like, all right, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. Uh, FIFA 23 is uh, coming to Stadia as part of EA Play, I believe. Yes. So you just get that uh, if you buy it on Stadia. Nice. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, I think that's everything exciting. Yes, it is. Everything else is just updates. Uh, PS Essentials. So everyone that's at a PS Essential and above are coming are getting these games for August. Yakuza Like a Dragon. Very good game. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 and Little Nightmares. Fantastic month. For everyone yes. for our PlayStation, make sure to claim all those games. You have to do it within the month of August. Then now they also added on the PlayStation blog that eight Yakuza games will be coming to PlayStation Plus starting this month. So basically, and the entire Yakuza franchise is going to be added to PlayStation Plus. Um, extra and premium, of course, yes. obfuscating like a dragon because that is the uh, month free game. So everything else is going to be coming to the program very shortly. And it looks like they're going in um, chronological order, maybe. So that's cool. Go ahead. Yeah. I just want to add that Sony yet again proving that essential, uh, sorry, not essential, extra truly is the best bang for your buck. Yeah. Um, out of the three tiers. Yeah, yeah. De definitely. You probably will be fine with extra. I agree. I don't, I don't think you need to go for premium unless you really think you're going to use like the couple classic games that are uh, in there, but yeah, I, I agree with you uh, for sure. Um, over on the Epic Game Store, Unrailed will be replacing Lawn Mowing Simulator on August 4th through the 11th, so as soon as uh, August 4th runs around, that's your new game, or your new free game for the Epic Game Store. Lawn Mowing Simulator is currently free. As a reminder, here's your prime game, free games of the month of August. Starcraft Remastered, Zack, McCracken, and the Alien Mindbenders, Beast of Maravilla Island, Recompile, that's a good game, Scourgebringer, that's a good game, and Family Mysteries, Poisonous Promises. Those are your games for Prime Gaming. Remember, you have to be a member of uh, Amazon Prime. Now, that's the news for the week. Now we have what's queued, of course... I asked my co-host today, is I so Christian, what he's going to have queued up for the week. This isn't just for him. This is for everyone listening. Remember, this could be a book, a comic book, a game, a podcast, a TV show, a movie, anything. You tell us in the comments or you oh, go over anything. to patreon.com slash easy achievers. You give us a buck there and you can DM us to get onto the show. You can tell us anything over on there. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, share with a fan, blah, blah, blah. I so Christian, what do you have queued up for the week? So because I do a movie podcast, I also Ooh. watch a lot of movies on my free time. And uh, there's always like ongoing Criterion sales like on the website, but every year Barnes and Noble does a 50% off Criterion movies uh, sale. This year it's through the out the month of July, uh, and I haven't had the chance to hit up a local Barnes and Noble just because I you know I shop local bookstores as opposed to um, like just bigger bigger shops. That means you're However, morally superior to everyone else. No, it does not. Absolutely not. I'm a, I'm a terrible person. But 
<laughs> but I, I, I do want to hit up the sale. So I'm planning on tomorrow actually seeing what one of my local Barnes and Noble has. And okay. Shopping for a few movies. Are you going to be checking yeah. out like, um, are these like cool, like Blu-rays or 4Ks? Are these like older movies or is it just like fucking, oh, like, it's anything? It, no, no, no. There are movies from the Criterion Collection. I have one right here, which is Drive My Car. And if you don't oh, know what the Criterion Collection is. Oh, this is, um, like, please tell me fucking, uh, I've heard of this. Why have I heard of it? The Criterion Collection? Yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, there's an organization called the Criterion Collection where they uh, curate movies that they deem culturally uh, uh, significant, like relevant, right? And that, yeah. and significant and that should be preserved. And so what they do is like, you know, along with the director and, and like people of the team, you know, not restore. In some cases, they restore old movies, but like they'll preserve film and then, uh, you know, ha have it continuously upscaled uh, to like the utmost degree they'll do like a lot of like cool stuff which is like have essays um written about the movies a lot of details uh, oh, about it cool. just in in the actual whoa uh, book itself uh and you get a cool movie so there's a lot of movies in the Christian collection this is like drive my car just came out um this is this month's drop and it is number 11 sorry 1136 so there's a, there's a lot of movies to collect if you're into that but it's very cool. I like that. I, I remember hearing about the Criterion Collection. I couldn't remember what it was. And that, that, that I, I feel like I remember buying like packs or something with that. So, um, that is a great recommendation to go check all that stuff out. Um, really quickly, ISO, since you do a movie podcast, um, sorry to put you on the spot, but I'm curious what you say to this. Are there any movies recently that are must watch in your opinion? Yeah, absolutely. You can maybe name uh, one or two if you want. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, everyone's going to go see Nope, if you haven't already. Like, Nope is fantastic. I, in my opinion, it's, it's Jordan Peele's best. That's kind of a hot take. People Ooh, think Get Out is the best. I'm excited, I, I, It's Jordan Peele doing Steven Spielberg. If you haven't already seen oh, Nope, you shit. should. It's, it's a perfect, that's a perfect blockbuster movie. If you're in the mood for something, like, in my opinion, that's a, it's a, I, I rated Nope 4.5 stars in Letterboxd. Like, I liked it a lot. Okay. Letterboxd, of course, social media app where you can rank and list movies. You can keep a log, but, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a 2021 movie that what premiered at festivals that finally got a theater release just two weeks ago. Okay. That is still in theaters uh, right now, and it will continue for like the next week or so. This is Marce Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. This is the Paddington 2 of 2022. <laughs> uh, if you know, you know. Uh, and if, like... Don't watch the trailer for Marcel the okay. Shell. Just go see, go see it. It's a great family movie, and it's like 80 minutes long. Uh, I laughed a lot. Turns out I actually cried a lot during this movie. Ooh. Easiest five star I gave this year. On top of RRR, which is on Netflix. Oh, should also R watch that. R and, R and on top of Everything Everywhere All at Once. Those are all five star movies. I still need to watch that movie. Fucking A. Everything. Everywhere All at Once. Okay, I appreciate this. I'm so behind on the movies. You do, you do the games for so long, and then when I'm bored of games, you know, you watch like a TV show or something, or you find something else. I'm always behind on the movies, and I need to watch. First off, RRR sounds really cool. Oh, um, so good. Yeah, because I saw like a little snippet of it. Oh, go ahead. I'm writing all you on think, your recommendations. You think Endgame was was hype in the theaters? Whoa! It was nothing compared to the experience I had watching RRR in in public. I don't know if they're doing any more showings. I don't think they are. I think they just had like one special rescreening. But it's on Netflix. It is the Hindi version, which is is different. But they did have the main actors redub the entire movie in the Hindi language. So it's there's it's you're essentially getting the similar experience just at home. But it's so good. It's so good. Oh shit! Okay, all right. R R R will be watched then. I, I will make sure that's a nope. And I need to go watch Nope. I fucking love his movies, so I gotta go watch that. Do it. Do it. All right, thank you so much. My cue is for boring. I will be playing Slay the Spire. I will be really just working. I, I will be making sure that these podcasts go out for you. I have to nail someone for next week. Um, oh, I, I, Christian, first off, thank you so much for coming by. Um, I don't know if you saw, but I debuted a new show, Achieving, over on uh, the channel. It's called Achieving. It's just a gaming interview show where I just interview people. Um, wow. my, yeah, my first, uh, guest was Dustin Furman. He works at Last Stand Media. And I want to see whenever you come back from your chip, if I can interview you, we'll talk about that off screen, of course, but I'd love to get you on there too. And I'd love, the door is always open for you here, man. So whenever you want to get on here, you just let me know. You got something coming out. You need a pimp or anything like that. 
But dude, I really appreciate you coming by. And remember, I appreciate everyone listening. Remember, you can help the show. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Remember to check out um, Iso Christian over on Pen Helpless Conquest. Make sure you watch the PXN podcast. A very fun podcast. First off, you guys got too much talent over there. You got to fucking relax. All these good edits. Uh, it wasn't just you. There was a bunch of good edits from the yeah. team. And then someone did the... Um, I, 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 I apologize, I forget. But um, someone did a really nice edit of your show... So like it was like highlights of like the first time yeah, people yeah. hosted. That was really cool. I was like, "Oh, this that, is that was cool." That was the co-creator of the show, uh, Daniel Prindle, uh, who did a uh, just launched a website too, like designed it himself, and it like the website is fantastic. You oh. can check that out. But we're we're doing episode one hundred and fifty next week, which is like a huge congratulations. A, thank you. We're doing a controller giveaway for Xbox Series X and S. If you want to enter that, you can do do so on the website. Uh, but I'm also hosting Jeopardy that day, so it should be a lot of video game fun. So Let's how do I watch the Jeopardy? Fun. I want to watch this. How do I how do I watch that? Is that just something that next, goes live later next week? Just just next Wednesday. Next uh, Wednesday, five okay. p.m. Pacific, eight p.m. Eastern. We'll be going live, and like maybe like half an hour in, to, we'll start Jeopardy. Video okay. game trivia. Yes, I need to. I need to do that. I'm very. I'm. I'm a fan of the video game trivia. I love playing along at home. But uh, I saw Christian. I appreciate you coming by. I look forward to the next time we host together, man. And uh, I look forward to potentially interviewing you whenever you're free again. Thanks so much for having me on, dude. Elijah, I respect the shit out of you. Oh! I want, like, point blank, I respect the shit out of you. You're going to make me so, cry. Don't thanks for having me on. Yeah, dude, anytime, man. Anytime. For real, anytime. Achievers, thanks so much for having me. Remember, check us out every single Friday and the new show, Achieving. Go check out that video that's live as of recording. I will be doing those as I can. So there's not a definitive schedule yet, but as soon as I get that on a regular schedule, I'll let everyone know. But until then, go Chief.